I know Kung Fu. Show me. You are the new student. Come closer. You're listening to the Kung Fu Podcast presented by James Still. I don't care if it's Muhammad, Imad, Bruce Lee. And Steve Newby. This is the original Five Fingers of Death right here. But my hands are registered as lethal weapons. That means we get into a fight, I accidentally kill you. I go to jail. Oh right, okay. There you go. That's better. Is that better? That's better. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. How long Jesus has it been? Christ! I'm How am I? All right. But yeah, you're fine. Beautiful, beautiful. How am I looking? <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> Excellent. Ah, uh, shit. Right, where are we? Hang on. Let me get my show notes. Right, ready to go. Okay, we ready? You good? Yeah. Good to go. Okay, guys, welcome to another episode of the Kung Fu Podcast with me, James Still, and uh, the notorious, the, the 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 black sheep himself, <laughs> Mister Newbie. How you doing, Steve? Yeah, I should, right? I should have it. Yeah, I should have a name like that, shouldn't I? Really, like a wrestler. <laughs> That's it. The yeah. black sheep. Yeah. The black sheep. <laughs> yeah. No one to a word I say, so they realise it's right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then sake. they and then they say they made it up. <laughs> yeah. oh, this is all true. This That's what used to true. happen to me a lot. That did. Yeah. Oh, oh it's a fact. Who? Yeah, who? Who? Go let me, let me ask you this. Go on. Who uh, organised the prices of the uh, DVDs, right, so that they would sell better? Hang on a second. And the DVDs, or are you talking the, DVD, the, the BKFA DVD? The B, no, the BK. Oh, okay. Let's go back a bit. Who actually set up the first VHS video for the syllabus? I'm going to hazard a guess here. Uh, was it you? Was it you? Yes, it was me. I had a student called uh, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin Adams. Um, but in the group called Dex's Midnight Runners, yeah. they called him Billy Adams. Right. He wrote, uh, you know, Come on Eileen and all that. Listen, with, uh, before you continue with, with this story, you know you're scratching yeah. and moving around and stuff. Am I? Yeah. Oh, I maybe can... it's... Sorry, I think my wires are catching my mic. Yeah. You know what I'm like with... Um... You're, like a, you're like a walking EMP, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay so can i carry on yeah you can better? carry on now yeah go on you were telling us about the yeah so it's uh yeah kevin kevin uh, roland was the the main man of the group i guess he was a singer and uh if anybody remembers uh come on eileen yeah that was that was a good rendition that was wasn't <laughs> that was good. it's just like yeah. it <laughs> yeah anyway kevin used to teach for me kevin kevin adams billy adams yeah used to teach uh in bridge north for me he lived in bridge north and did a lot of stuff yeah and uh so i got him uh he had a company um doing videos and stuff and uh before the days of uh dvd and yeah and all that and, and when it be and computers really yeah and uh yeah and he did the um yeah the vhs first it, video it wasn't a bad actually um no, badly put was... together uh first uh yeah syllabus thing really yeah there was just him uh me uh john russell and mastio down at the center and um, we did yeah and we did um we did the video of uh, the first uh first syllabus book it you know and then after yeah. that yeah, yeah well then the, the reason i was you know just going on uh i was going to say to you who who priced or got the got the a better situation so that the um the DVDs would be sold better. Me, yeah. who changed the rules of the sticky hands in um, the nationals to stop people just kicking each other in the groin and poking each other in the eye. In other words, they had to, they should have be sponsored yeah. by a, an instructor who's 
capable of knowing what he's doing. Answer me. Well, who did? Oh, there was several things I wouldn't go on. Well, but how many people? How many times was I mentioned in the AGM's minutes for saying these things? Answer zero. <laughs> <laughs> zero. And I'll tell you for why. It's because I used to sit next to uh, my friend Alan Neald. Yeah. And uh, I used to talk to him about these things because I knew he was very, you know, talkative to, to Master Yao because he lived nearby and everything. He used to go to his house and yeah. talk to him. And I knew <laughs> he would talk to about these things. And so he, he, in the dinner time, in the dinner hour, yeah. uh, at the AGM meetings, he would talk to him. And then Master Yao would come out and go, you know, I think that's a good idea. I think Steve's got a good idea. And then they'd write it down in the minutes of yeah. Masti Yao's idea. Oh. You just take a look at the minutes and see what it says when it says Masti Yao's idea. Oh, we have to thank Masti Yao for, uh, you know, coming up with this. And I'm going, oh. no point in going really, is it? <laughs> but it, it was just the way to get things across. That's oh. all. It was quite well, that's it. it it's like funny. you know, you have, if you can't go through the front door, you got to go through the back door. You know. Yeah, it was a, it was hilarious. It was just, you know, unbelievable Listen. the way I get. So that's why I always call myself the black sheep. You are most definitely a black sheep, and you know. Not I did the, say last the last podcast. I did say, didn't I? The mm -hmm. way I, when people says to me, "Can you watch our, our nationals mm, uh, yeah. demo?" and I went, "It's all crap." <laughs> and, and that's that's why it's, I'm the black yes, sheep too. You see, you see. <laughs> I really I don't know how to keep my mouth shut, do I? I you know, you, uh, no, I don't. But I tell you what, I do know, I do know. Like you're all the way. You're like six thousand miles away now. Okay. Yeah. Now what what I'm worried about is you're so far away from the source, from like the mothership. How do we know <laughs> that you're keeping you know keeping what you're doing true, pure, you know? bona fide and i tell you tell you what i've done mr newbie yeah i've devised a series of questions right <laughs> to which you you have to answer and you've got to be honest mind you no you know I'll no funny business best. you've got to be honest seven questions and it's all designed to see if you have got what it takes if you've got the minerals to be proliferating now in north america Are you ready you go for it all right then okay cue the music Exactly. <laughs> right. Question number one. Okay. Now, the, now this is, these are all genuine questions, right? You have a choice between studying these actual styles, and which do you choose? Face smashing foo, thug jitsu, Doctor Root snake oil style Russian kung fu. Apostle Dr. Christian Harforche Taijutsu Maestro Burton's Five Thunder Dimac <laughs> The Al Gaza Matrix System or Lao Gar, which do you choose? I, yeah, I think the Lao Gar I choose really mainly because the name appeals. <laughs> do you think? Well I'm sorry, Mr. Newbie, you chose these wrong. These are all ah, these are all <laughs> You chose wrong. The, you can't because yeah, hey. all, all those are real are they they're all real oh my god all of them are real you chose wrong though oh, okay. okay everyone knows you've got to cross train to proliferate <laughs> this is it's true it's true right question oh, number two i wrote articles i wrote articles uh, you can't, don't magazine. interrupt the quiz maestro <laughs> okay, here please I'm thank sorry. you question I'm number sorry. two no. question number two when teaching a class do you find yourself using words or phrases to bolster your credibility such as reality based limb destruction <laughs> de <laughs> devastating power brutal knockout quantum pressure points fight stopper dimac free flow self defense and tino tulcio siega execution methods <laughs> Well, do you though? Yeah, no, I don't use any of those, I'm afraid. Uh, you got that wrong. You got that wrong. You, listen, everyone knows you got to use pseudoscience when you're teaching martial arts. It makes you sound right. better and like you know what you're talking about. Right then, question number three, you ready? Yeah. There's only seven questions. 
bloody You're hell. not doing very well so far. Like I no. said, you've got to answer honestly. Have you ever felt the need to dress up as a Shaolin monk, complete with prayer beads, leg wraps, and cloth sandals? I don't think so. I did go and see Rocky Horror once, and I wore stocking, you, stocking no, since the You got that wrong. Right. You got it wrong, I'm afraid. Listen, listen, what you do in your spare times on Saturday nights, we're talking about martial arts. You and you must understand. You've got to dress up as a monk for some right. credibility. What's wrong with you? I'm just I've got a bald head. You, that's, hey, that doesn't count. I thought you might say that. Right. Question four. Okay. Only seven questions. Question four. Do you own one or more of the following? A set of a screamer sticks. <laughs> <laughs> the. Di- Shh. Quiet. This is serious. The DVD Shaolin Wheel of Life, the Master's Edition featuring John Hurt. No. Pair of nunchucks. No, no. <laughs> Thai boxing shorts. Yellow and black on its Suka Tiger trainers, a la the ones that Bruce Lee wore in Game of Death. Do you no. own any of those? No, sorry. Uh, you got that one wrong as well. Everyone knows that any stylist in this modern era owns a screamer sticks what's wrong with you <laughs> that's because they run out of things to do jesus right for god's <laughs> sake right then question five question five do you post more posts on facebook about wushu than laugar <laughs> no but i know who does <laughs> yeah. well what's no, your no, answer no, mr spots. newbie i've got to lock you in i've got to lock you in here What's your I'm answer? Sorry, uh, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Everybody knows you've got to post Wushu on Facebook, even if you're a Laogar Guardian. Okay, this is important <laughs> shit. <laughs> Waiting to come on, someone just posted a Wushu post on one of the Laogar pages. Right, honestly, right. Two more questions to go, and I'm not impressed so far. Right, okay, <clears throat> okay. So you are only allowed to watch one. DVD box set for the rest of your life. Do you choose A. The American Ninja Pentology B. David Carradine Shaolin Tai Chi and Qi Kung Workouts Wait <laughs> Or C. The official Laogar Syllabus DVD collection Well that's a hard one <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'd, I'd like to. Change. I'd like. I'd like to remake one of them. <laughs> what's the What's the answer, Mister Newby? I'm going to have to press you for this. Oh, I've got to choose one. You've got to choose one. It'll have to be the Laogar one with changes. Oh my god! With the, with the edits. Oh my god! You actually got one right. <laughs> Are you sure about that? Do you not want to phone a friend? <laughs> no. All right then. <laughs> Okay, right, last question now. Last question. And this is a kind of lateral thinking out the box thing, all right? Then we'll press on. On a very rare occasion, Master Yao invites you exclusively to be his caddy as he plays crazy golf (laughs) at the Ghetto Golf Club in Birmingham. Mm. However, however, you suddenly realise it clashes with the Kylie Minogue showgirl concert tour to which you have front row tickets. <laughs> what do you do? It's gotta be Kylie Minogue, I'm afraid. Oh, <laughs> of course it is Kylie Minogue, but you got that wrong. You've got to get some FaceTime with Master Yao. You know what I it's had like. FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, FaceTime I, is one thing, pulling a caddy is another. At, at, at uh, Crazy Ghetto Golf, and that's actually a place. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Newby, you've got out of seven questions, you only got one right. You are in no position to be that, proliferating. Is that Kylie Minogue? <laughs> It was. It was most definitely not Kylie Moe. You're supposed to. You're supposed to be Master Yao's. You know, get some FaceTime. Caddy. Yes, that's right. Mm. Yeah, but I'm sorry. It's. Uh, it's. You know, you're. Uh, you're not good enough. He wouldn't you. ask anyone to do that, but there are a lot of people that would offer. <laughs> you think? Yeah. Well, you know. He would never ask anybody to do that for him. Well, of course. Well, I don't think he'd be def- playing crazy golf at the Ghetto Golf Club. 
Well, even if it was proper golf at Kings Norton Golf Club, he wouldn't necessarily ask anybody to caddy for him. But I bet you there'd be a few people that are running up there and go, I don't know how he messed me out. I'll yeah. do that. <laughs> They might have a different accent than that, but I'm not going to come out with it because it's a giveaway. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, let's press on with the rest of the show. You've Um, made me bitch. uh, Yeah, you made your own. Actually, you started the bitching today. You mentioned DVDs, and next thing you know, you're bitching. Yeah, Um, I guess. uh, Right, okay, so. Uh, Sorry, uh, before I forget, I was just saying to you, because... Hmm. We were talking about one of those questions with cross training and that. Oh yeah. And I and I just, uh, you know, wanted to explain. I did write, I think, about eleven or twelve articles for for um, Combat Magazine. Yeah. And um, one of them was about cross training and how, you know, how it bad it is. <laughs> and it's kind of did. my my yeah. disagreement with it. That's all. So. When was this? When was that? Was I that in the nineties? Nineteen ninety six, possibly. Okay, okay. Right, so I, I know because when we, we the, I remember sort of two thousand and six or whatever when we were in when when they did a big, you know, feature on on. Oh, maybe it was right. then. Yeah, nineteen ninety six was a different one when I went to Scotland. Oh, That's okay. right. Yeah, I did one with Dave Baptist when I went to Scotland. Right. Um, that was an article, like a big article about me and Dave Baptist, and then. Um, yeah, in the in the two thousands and yeah. six, is it? Was yeah, it, was, it would have been two thousand and six. Yeah, yeah, that's when we had the big uh, photo shoot, yeah. and, the, and that's when I wrote the articles, and everybody, yeah. you know, contributed to the the development, whatever, and uh, and then did and, and then didn't offer anything. Yeah, it's your yeah. chance to write in Combat Magazine, and no one did. Yeah, it's your opportunity to write about your club. It's your opportunity to write about your students, whatever student of the month all this sort of thing was all supposed to be in combat magazine i wrote articles you know about the style and about mm-hmm. my you know my attitude towards you know training and so on yeah and uh, i wrote you know an article every month <laughs> a two-page article and and not a single person contributed to it and then they complained about the fact that because we had to pay to do it yeah you know um it, they complained that they'd paid for nothing well yeah if you don't do anything about it you don't get anything <laughs> but mind you you've always been the one who uh, you, you're a bit of a talker though it's just as I well can... you were writing things you know you yeah, talk a good talk fight glass <laughs> <laughs> oh, God's sake. Yeah. Um, so we've had some letters this week we've had yeah. some uh, messages and we've had some Excellent. questions which is always good mm-hmm. what are you doing what are you messing around with now Sorry, I was just, I was banging a drum, look. I thought you were looking, are you, is that your food call? Are you waiting on chocolate? No, 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 no that was my... <laughs> Bring me chocolate, was... no. I've ate all my Smarties. Oh, have you? Yeah, I got, I got Baileys. The kids bought me a massive bottle of Baileys, like oh. Baileys, six... <laughs> have six, you been at it already? $60. Baileys. No. <laughs> Baileys. Baileys. $60, bloody yes. hell. 60, yeah, it was huge, it's huge, bloody like a barrel. Oh, right, okay. But, uh, yeah, nice. Right. So, well, I'm just so looking at the empty glass right now, oh, actually. Well, do you want me to pause yeah. the proceedings while no, you go and top okay. up? You know, there's nothing no, like a wee tipple be. while we. Uh, right. Okay. So yeah, like I said, we're going to be talking. Uh, we've got some questions from people, and we're also later on going to be just talking about um, uh, back by Jern, the seventh set. So stay tuned for that. We've. Um, but in probably the meantime, need a podcast just about that. Probably, we, probably it's, so it's going to be. Uh, but we, we, you know, we have been off for a couple of days. Actually, this is our longest mm. sort of between shows one, really. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to start off just with some something, you know, scooting tinternet whilst we were on a, a sabbatical. Um, I was noticing. I was wondering, what's your thoughts? What's your opinion? Um, are you uh, a barefoot or a shoes person when doing martial arts? What do you prefer? Oh, nowadays I'm a I'm a shoesy person, but yeah. uh, I got some little quack shoes, quack. leather shoes. Quack shoes. Yeah, they're like uh, from Simac. Oh, I've had them right. for years. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I thought you and, said Crocs. Um, then I was like, what? No. Well, I've got them as well, but Ooh, I'm not training them. Jesus. I used to when I was a kid. I used to run around. We we talked about that, and yeah. uh, I could run over anything. Yeah. Um, coals, you know, kind of anything, yeah. gravel and paving, what? you know, 
bare feet everywhere. I, I mean, am I right? I mean, I, I'm under the impression that, you know, if you, Kung Fu has generally always been trained with shoes on, hasn't it? You know? No. Has it? No. No, I mean, like... No, well, origin, originally it was, it's it's bare feet simply, I mean, you harden your feet. Yeah. You just, just, you know, maybe stick a little bit of white spirit on your feet to harden your pads. Yeah. Um, but no, a lot of the time it was, it was well, it was always bare feet initially. Everyone has to be equal, you see. Yeah. Um, uh, I mean, I've been in situations where you know you've had two students training. One had one had bare feet, the other one had, you know, kind of trainers on. Oh, you get stubbed on the toe. With yeah, them. he got stubbed. He caught his toe, and his yeah. toenail went straight up, yeah. ninety degrees, <laughs> straight off his toe. Yeah. Lifted his big toe up. Oh, it was painful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not. No, other, no, but that's yeah. trainers, though. If you wear trainers in a class, there's yeah. nothing worse than wearing bloody. Well, trainers. there used to be the old kung fu tra uh, shoes. Oh, you know the the, don't, the don't kung fu shoes. shoes. The slippers, yeah, the, the Chinese kung fu ones. Slippers. Yeah. yeah. Did I tell you? They I, made it with. Go on. Go on. No, no, go on. I, go on. What were you going to say? I was going to say they got plastic you know or rubber soles but also you can get the compact the the the, the actual soles if you buy them from china yeah i bought my first pair from china in 1975 yeah. i think when you were uh, in the navy when when i was in the navy that's yeah. right i went there and i bought i went to china communist china at the time i had i got my little flag what my, do you mean my at Chinese the time flag. it still is communist no, but Chairman Mao was still alive. Oh, oh, proper communism. I'm, talk man. I'm talking real, yeah. I'm talking oh. communism where you, oh. you couldn't go anywhere and they, yeah, they escorted did. you to the Siemens mission. And they, they don't make them like could, they used to. Communism. Oh, you could, yeah, you could buy anything cheap. Yeah. And yeah, I bought some slippers and I bought an air rifle and like everything <laughs> from this place. And uh, yeah, and you know, t shirts like Bruce Lee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah, to, uh, so uh, oh, I bought right. them, and yeah, but they had the the cloth. Uh, oh, thing, I know compact, the ones you mean. Yeah, compact yeah. sewn well, old clothes. So as what? they started to wear out, yeah, you would get bits of pants. Yes, yeah, <laughs> all over the you know following you. Do you know? Do you, <laughs> yeah, do you, I've never worn them, but I had a pair. My first ever pair of kung fu slippers, right? Mm. And I got cheap off internet years and years ago. And I remember yeah. wearing them, but they had, it was a plastic sole, right? Yeah, you just now, go flying. Jesus yeah. Christ. The hall was a wooden floor. I'm like yeah. bloody Christopher Dean skating all around the place. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and when I was training, uh, at, I was at Doug's class uh, not so long ago. One of the guys there, bloody hell, he, he has a pair of these things. Bloody Kung mm. Fu slip. He, he did a front kick. And the thing shot off the end of his foot and hit the light. Yeah. Honest to God. Yeah. It's yeah. like, that's, that's dangerous. And, you know? and the rubber ones were great, but the trouble is they lasted about five minutes yeah. as soon as you did a few turns, spinning kicks, yeah. whatever, the yeah. edges started yeah. tearing off yeah. and taking the sewing out. I tell you what, I, I tell you what gripes my, my, gets on my, you know, gets my ackles up. Yeah. It's, and it's, and it's, and it's per, purely a personal preference thing. I hate those brusely elasticated Kung Fu trousers. Yeah. Oh, I yes, can't so stand them. Oh, I can't yeah, stand them. Yeah, I had a pair of them. I had a pair of them you. early on. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. God. But uh, no. But going back to it, like, like, oh, I don't like people training in the class with trainers, particularly with the raised heel, because if you're doing stances, if you do, you, you've got a total false sense of your own sort of balance and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. Plus, you know, you can, you know, if your stance work isn't great, if you're moving, you, you know, you could twist the ankle you know because you've got yeah. quite a race um but you know in terms of training I, I tell you i much prefer to have something on my feet you know yeah Just, well nowadays yeah we tend we're a bit lazy yeah and we tend to do that but there's a lot of people still go i i think it's imp i think good classes it is i'm not saying that we don't run good classes but you know it would be nice for me as an old fart yeah. to see people training in bare feet throughout really? but but that's to make everyone equal but there's just today people just won't do it they just won't even do that if you say that you've got to train in bare feet the first thing they'll do yeah. is they'll get blisters yeah. and then they won't know how to cope with the blisters yeah. so then they just won't train yeah. so they'll leave it a few days the blisters will heal come back start again yeah. same thing will happen yeah. so instead of just keep on training and and you know 
like I say, stick a bit of paraffin on there or a bit yeah. of white spirit yeah. and, and, you know, Bob's your uncle, you yeah. get hardened feet. Well, and, uh, you know, as long as you don't yeah. put a match to them. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, if you're, like, putting on your fighting kit and whatnot, you know, yeah. t- you know bare feet order. Because some people yeah. have the cheek, you know, to, to yeah. wear their trainers under their foot protectors. I'm like, well, you know, what good is yeah. that? You know, yeah, so it's, yeah. It's just quite... but people won't even cut their toenails today oh, anyway. God, so, yeah. you know, yeah. it's the way it is. Yeah, do you remember that? Where the world, you James? Remember? Yeah, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, my my world is 1950s. <laughs> I haven't moved on. My wardrobe's 1970s. <laughs> my foot... <laughs> Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a red. Yeah, I saw that. I saw the video with you singing that song from the seventies. Oh yeah, no. or was it sixties? No, it was nine, yes. It was the sixties. It was Fireball XL Five. I That's wish it, yeah. I was a spaceman. Yeah, that, yeah was, that was great. No, I'm sorry about that. Um, I got bored. You know, you get bored in lockdown. But yeah. uh, no, I mean, yeah, I, I'm definitely a, a, sh- a shoe, a, a training shoes wear kind of guy. I really, mm. you know. Yeah, that's my thing but whatever floats your boat talking about incidentals right i've got a gripe and i'm wondering if you could set me straight or if i've got it all you know if i've got it wrong okay mm. sashes right <laughs> sashes uh-huh. if you're now if you're a student the sash is on your left if you're a teacher the sash is on your right However, mm-hmm. is that correct so far? Am I right so far? It is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, if you were taking your own class, you wear yes. it on the right. Okay. Or if you're a if you're a black sash training under someone else, you should wear it on your left. Okay. Okay. All right. It's just, it's not important, but it's but it but it's just a bit of detail, and we love the details, yeah, yeah, don't we? It's one of them old. Now, can I ask things? you, when you tie your sash, I have always tied my sash right in like mm-hmm. a bow, in like like you're doing your um. You're doing your shoes up, your shoelaces. The reason yeah. being, if someone grabs your sash during a fight or whatever, and they yeah. pull it, it unravels. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, it's it's not for that reason. No, I mean, be... no, but but Sorry. it's it's a reason. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, if someone yeah. grabs you, they can't hold on to you. I'll t- I'll explain the reason and and why and how they're tied go on if then, you yeah. like yes please that's yeah. all i can do yeah well there wasn't any elastic previously so you would have t- tunics trousers if you want pants they mm. say here yeah. um where they would fold over you know depending on which way you were hanging as they say so, so you would, left or right yeah so you would fold them and then you would wrap your sash around in order to keep them up and then you would tie it left or right yeah. you, depending on what color and so on yeah uh you would oh, it's an, just an ordinary overhand knot and when you come to do the second overhand you it becomes a bow and then through that you pull another bow mm-hmm. so basically in other words it's not pulled all the way through yeah basically if you want to get the toilet quick if yeah. you want the washroom as fast as possible yeah first thing you do straight to the loo pull straight the to the washroom yeah pull one cord pull the other trousers fall down now if you if you accidentally pull you know get one caught yeah. during training yeah you still got the other one to rely on right. so it's they're not going to come down straight away yeah. they're you know so you have two right. two you know two pulls yeah. and your trousers are down Mm. and that's that's basically the way that they're tied that's the yeah. way it's tied yeah. and of course it's called a piety belt so you would keep your coins and your your various bits and pieces in sure. there like if you were if you're a uh one of those groups that you said earlier you'd probably have some throwing stars in there <laughs> probably maybe maybe a six foot pole yeah you never know <laughs> hey you know uh, uh, the, and the, they're nine feet long the the re- belts and the re- nine feet long yeah oh right okay 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 right okay no i just wanted to like go you know sort that out because i see a lot of pictures of people wearing sashes you know on mm-hmm. tinternet on you know and yeah. they look to me like they're tied on bloody you know tight you know with with very tight knots yeah. I'm like, well, okay. So I just wanted to uh, just wanted to clear that up, Mr. Newby. So that well, was, you uh... you remember, James, <clears throat> yeah. and this is no detriment, okay? Yeah. I don't mean this is a detriment. I just mean this is just nostalgia. Yeah, sure. I went to Scotland, as you know, to teach the Scottish um, in 1991 or two or three or something like that. Yeah. So they asked me to go to Scotland uh, for two weeks. I went on holiday and I stayed there for eight years. So, yeah. 
<laughs> you know yeah. and and Messi says you know if you're going to go up there you got to do this do that you're going to become you're going to run them and whatever yeah. so that's what I did and built a big a area yeah. and the, the, but as you know I told you about the little classes that that I went to yeah. and I met Jim for the first time yeah. now a 6th yeah. or 7th degree or something 6th yeah. degree and uh, yeah when I first met him and he threw his sword down remember yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah, I was telling you that. And that great video you sent me the other day, you did it <laughs> exactly the same after well, I showed you the set. <laughs> no, it, it was great. I've yeah. never, ever yeah. been yeah. had my mind blown. Anyway, go on. I'll speak about that. In a Sorry, bit. to finish, the, to, yeah. to cut a long story short, he's, he's was tied with Velcro. Right. He, he was a first degree black sash. Right. And, and yeah, uh, it was tied with Velcro. Wow, wow! And uh, that's not a detriment to Jim because I mean they just they were so far away from everybody. Yeah. He had no one to ask. Yeah, he just had no one to ask, and he never came down to courses or anything. He was yeah. just in Scotland. He's a he's a homeboy. Yeah, and, yeah, and that and that's what it was like. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know that was then. Yeah, yeah. that was then. Um. Yeah, you did. Uh, you did. Honest to God, the other day when I because <clears throat> I sent you, uh, I love to get critiqued. Right, people. I love getting critiqued because you know the minute you 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 think you know something, that's when you uh, start losing the plot. Okay, so all the time, you know, be your own worst critic and always seek sort of uh, criticism where possible. Mm -hmm. So I sent I sent Steve a video of me doing the uh, the first uh, the sword form, uh, and um, oh my god, like I I thought it looked really good. And oh, yeah, I, I was you know, reasonably happy with it. Anyway, two hours later on Facebook Messenger and uh, two A4 sized, you know, pages full of notes. I just, I, you know, I needed a Valium after that, Steve. I swear to God. <laughs> but talk about the detail. And it's the detail yeah. that I love. Like, I love, yeah. I love the detail. But it's but, yeah, but it amazes me. Yeah, but it amazes me. Like you know, it's so it's sad that people. Then this is the problem, you see, because there's no set way of teaching. Mm. People learn from people. You know, they may be competitive fighters or they may be traditionalists, whatever. Mm. And, and you have whatever group will try to teach the syllabus in as best of they know it mm. they may not know it that well they may go to courses or they may see other people and get it from them yeah. whatever in the end there is no distinction uh, no defined way of teaching the syllabus or, or whatever so what happens is it just from generation to generation it gets diluted and diluted and yeah. diluted and and okay some of those generations are lucky enough to be able to meet up with other people that can then correct them or they they're able to go to the center uh, and so on and different courses but but and and then of course it's very hard for them to change those um habits those habits yeah and so what happens is of course you get a completely bastardized set and and then of course people also go by uh, an individual answer must see i might give someone an answer mm. uh, to a question for them remember yeah. people and then those people will then go right oh he told me it this way mm. but he, t he may have told you it that way just as I do yeah. he may well have told you it that way because he knows that's how you think and that's how you will need the answer to be described to you yeah. so that he, you know he knows that you understand what he's saying but then the next person ask him the same question and he may give them a separate answer you know which will be similar but you know just using different words remember it's his second language yeah. it's not his first language in fact it's about his eighth language because he speaks about you know seven different dialects of chinese yeah so it's it's not so easy to come up with the same words all the time yeah. and um, yeah it's so you do get these people that go oh no no it's not it, it didn't say you know that he said it, it's this and yet they mean the same bloody yeah. thing and you go yeah. well the good thing is that that chop choy we talked about the other day didn't yeah. we about the name of that that technique well we've actually got a question pertaining to uh chop choy which we'll uh, sort of talk about in a bit but, uh, yeah okay well i'll leave know. it there then, then well yeah but uh, but you're, you're so right i mean like there's a certain amount of i think a lot of the problem with people in terms of when you've got mass 
uh, gatherings of people or, or, or sort of or like a, an organization like like the BKFA or whatever with someone at the head okay mm -hmm. so one week like you said Master Yao might say something next week he might say a completely different thing and what you've got is it's like it's like that I, I don't mean as a detrimental thing right to people I, I really don't but it's like those 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 aliens in Toy Story when they go yeah. ooh yeah do you know what I mean right. right yes and so that everybody has this mentality whereby that's it that's the answer that's it that's it yeah, you've got yeah. to do it like this right yeah no, and it's fine that's fine I'm not at life, all life of Brian comes to mind there you go then there you go right <laughs> and it's kind of like this her no 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 <laughs> it's but but no I'm not it's not like being I'm not being uh, sort of uh, casting aspersions on anyone I'm just saying no. that's the way people are aren't they it's like it's a you know they want answers and they you know yeah so, but, but, know. But, but what my point is that um, there are many reasons you do things in the sets, right? Yeah. Of course, we have to first of all get the correct movements. That's the whole point of it, and whatever. Mm. But you know, but you know, it. You have to try and reach a point in your training when uh, I don't know. It's called like a, a, a transcendent state, right? Where you're you're no longer focused on dogma and you know the the the, the, the minutia you know you're just focused on the reason why you do it now that doesn't detract from getting the movement right because let's face it you have to get the movement right but it's like you say right and it's like you said i don't mean to hijack this but it's That's like you fine. say you have to understand you have to get correct grammar before you can start to speak in slang yeah. and most people are not at the stage when they have got correct grammar they still write in huge letters and you know wonky yeah, they, bits they and completely stuff like miss grammar and they yeah. just you know they, they never went to school in yeah. other words yeah uh, i mean there are two points i want to make there um firstly about life of brian <laughs> he's not he's, he's not, not the messiah, the messiah. <laughs> He's a very naughty boy. <laughs> do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Just a quick one. He had to put yeah. a rubber rubber band around his winky for that scene oh, to, ma yeah. to make him look like he was, you know, Jewish. Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway, move on, move on. It's okay, true. I didn't really look at it in that much detail. To didn't be you? honest with you, no, oh, I'm, I'm all about. I'm a stickler for details, Mister Newby. Oh Christ! Oh my God! I was, I was around in that time when it was open. I was queuing for Genesis tickets. Were you? <laughs> and, did you uh, have yeah, a perm? Did you have a Did you have a perm at the time? To be honest, I did. <laughs> I was I was queuing around the back of the Odeon for uh, Genesis tickets yeah. and, and overnight because there was no computers or anything like you couldn't order online so you had to queue yeah. literally physically overnight with a sleeping bag you know waiting for tickets to see if you could get a ticket at yeah. the door and they would sell them at the door and and in the morning I was right around the back of this you know in this alleyway that went yeah. right around the back of the, sh the, sh the uh, cinema or the theatre yeah. and, uh, and this cleaner opened the window at the top and when she opened this window to, you know, to dust a mop or whatever, yeah. everybody in the crowd, everybody, and I'm saying everybody, picked up their shoe and went, it's a sign. <laughs> and, they, and the woman, she didn't know what to do with herself. Oh, yeah. that's great. Oh, oh, that's it was fantastic. brilliant. They all started quoting him. Yeah. yeah. But sorry, we, we digress, don't oh, we? we? Do, yeah. uh, there are, uh, okay, let's, let's talk about Master Yao's... Um, ideology if you like or, or people's perception of him yeah uh, i went to uh, a brand slash course i used to go to the brand slash courses irrespective of what grade i was right the way through fourth degree whatever yeah and i used to go to them no matter what every single one and um the one time he demonstrated uh, the number nine is it yeah when you sweep them yeah yeah number nine yeah, kick yeah, block yeah. and you sweep them yeah and then you recover by stepping backwards okay uh spinning backwards yeah on the one hand and then the following course i went to you stepped backwards mm -hmm. and so i i was confused so i went up to him and i went nasty out um and he was sitting there at the in the it was in john bright street uh in the boxing rings mm -hmm. and uh, they used to demonstrate in the boxing rings mm -hmm. and i says master i says last time i was here last month uh you um did it this way right you stepped out and then this week you you spun the other way 
um, so which one is it? And he looked at me, and John looked at me, and they went, use your noggin. <laughs> In other words, yeah. you've got to recognise what is useful what works mm -hmm. for you and the circumstances that you may be in when you do it yeah. so uh, there's there's nothing it you know sets of fluid oh, don't totally. change the techniques yeah but there are ways of making things work yeah okay but so there are lots of reasons and, and ways well, of doing things but yeah. but don't change the techniques I, th I, I, I always I always think like that you know sets are fluid but yes. when you start, and the, and the problem with people is they'll start over, and you know, I do it, they'll start over analyzing the incidentals, for example, the hand blocks and kick blocks. Now, what I mean by that is they focus a hell of a lot of their mental energy and concentration on, oh, is, what's he doing with this? Is it blah, blah, blah. okay? Yeah. A bit like what your example of what you just did there. Now, you know, as well as I do, that these, these hand blocks and kick blocks are basically formulated from techniques by They are a vehicle, remember? Yeah, they are a exactly. vehicle. Yeah. They are not. Yeah. I mean, okay, if you've the, got to yeah. do them in a grading, fair enough. Yeah. They're a standard. But, listen, but, I agree. But, 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 but the point I was making was the sets of fluid, spend your time trying to figure out what you're doing with the sets how you're using this technique for that move or whatever you know instead of i don't say wasting time doing hand blocks and kickbox you need to train them because it's they're great ideas but yeah i think a lot of training you know energy is is directed in the wrong things if you like do you, do you know what i mean is, does that make sense to you or? well yeah and i think uh, the problem people have with uh, sets and a good example i gave you the other day uh, was um the the movement in farcune where after you've uh done your your leopard's paw the mm -hmm. last leopard's paw and you yeah. turn to the 90 degrees to uh, is it 90 degrees yeah 90, yeah, degrees. 90 degrees yeah, yeah yeah and you're blocking inwards with your right hand yeah. and from that position then you're going to slide your left hand up that hand and yeah. grab yeah and then people what do people do they just put the other hand next to it and they pull it together as if they was pulling someone yeah. with both hands yeah. and and in reality if you look at the way that they've got their hands it makes no sense because it wouldn't work mm -hmm. yeah, there's no way you can grab anyone like that what they miss is the fact that when you've done the block and you've slid your hand up that second hand your left hand has now grabbed or grabbed their wrist yeah. or their arm you rotate the arm upside down making it difficult for them to um, get out of it really because mm -hmm. they can't pull back because their arm their anatomy has now changed the, the configuration of their body, in other words, their angle or their balance is now changing as well. Yeah. The other hand comes underneath and just um, helps that hand. What do you call it? it Guides um, it? Or, no, no, uh, I don't mean that. I mean, it consolidates the hold, really. Yeah. So you're getting the yeah. arm. It's almost like pulling on a rope, you know, like Marcel, a sailor pulling Marcel, a rope. Yeah. yeah, that's it. The Marcel, Marcel, that's what you said, yeah. yeah. And that's what it is, basically. <laughs> Block with the right slide up and grab with the left yeah marcel marcel with the both hands. no marcel marceau what marcel marceau that's it that's Mar the one that's it what did i say marceau, you said marceau, marceau marceau well that's his brother <laughs> oh sorry no no not yeah. his brother okay yeah so you're basically just pulling and then when you pull it like that of course mm. you are pulling an arm mm. and of course pulling that arm pulling but, him off balance yeah provides you with the uh, sickle kick but it's imagination it. it's imagination yeah. steve and practice yes 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 physical practice, practice with but, a partner but but actually yeah obviously yeah. right obviously yeah, the, the, you need the, james that. I, I i'm not arguing with you here i'm, I'm just trying to butt in yeah. um but i'm just trying to say like um you know people they so desperate to practice the set over and over again that they practice the same mistake over and over again because they never actually take the set apart yes. and use a partner and yes. the partner oh can you do hunch to me can you yes. can you grab hold of my arm let me see if i can yes. make this work and and see how this works yeah. and what is this for yeah. and discuss it with them as well yeah. and and so you educate both of you um you know ed did i say educate on time then? i don't know i think you've been on the baileys <laughs> Is the okay? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. And that's what you're doing. You're educating, and then of course people take an interest in what you're doing, and yeah. then you educate someone else, and you've got yourself a, a great 
um, you know, class. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, but the more people get involved, the more people can argue the point whether it works or not. Absolutely. And and you know, oh, we'll try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah. Work. I always remember someone telling me about what happened in the centre. Uh, you know, the guys come rushing in, and he goes, "Oh, Master Yao, you know, uh, I, I think his arms dislocated. Will you come and help?" And and Master Yao goes out and he says, "Oh, what happened?" He says, "Well, I was doing the knife defence, coming down, and he's, he he I." told him showed him how to do it and he says oh it won't work so I did it and and he said did it work and Master Yao went well there you go then it worked <laughs> <laughs> so and he put his arm back he relocated yeah. his arm back yeah. for him oh, and goodness. says don't ask such stupid questions <laughs> 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 you know, I don't think he says that because no there's no such thing as a stupid question yeah. the only stupid question is, is the question yeah. you ask yourself on the bus on the way at home yeah, yeah. it's too late yeah. that's a stupid question oh, absolutely i mean you know uh, we, uh, we i don't know why we were discussing farcune the other day what were we discussing why were we discussing i think we were that? talking about sharp joy and then we were talking ah, about right, whether okay. something yeah, yeah. was in I, sharp joy and right oh yeah yeah i remember now but you because you are well aware everybody should be well aware of listens to us now mm -hmm. that the set it isn't about doing the first set the second set the third set it's about learning the first set to mm -hmm. understand the second set to understand the third yeah. set to understand the fourth set because there are techniques in there which will always reoccur within those forms obviously the forms get bigger so new techniques are applied or mm. developed but there are many techniques that are actually used for different reasons yeah. and at different angles and with different com combinations in order to qualify that technique in yeah. lots of different uses well, you, and, and yeah. people can, they go oh no that's not that move that's in that mm -hmm. set mm -hmm. oh that's not move. Uh, you know and a typical one is uh, what we're going to talk about in um sure. Sure. Journey, actually oh, okay yeah. yeah well going back if we if we, we you mentioned vacuum with the grab i mean you can interpret uh in, in phalogy there's grabs in uh, laugar yeah. there's grabs in back yeah. there's grabs but it's about having, like you said, that that the mentality and the uh, the uh, physical practice, obviously, so you can figure out what you're doing. Open mindedness. But, but, yes, as well. open mindedness. Yeah, not be, not to be. Um, What's just because word? your instructor says, "Oh, do it this way," doesn't mean to say that it works unless he shows you it works. Mm. Mm. You know, you need to know that it works. But, but but then once you know it works, figure out why it doesn't work figure out find an argument against it and then figure out why something else could work instead you know etc so or or by changing it in yeah. that sense because and i'm not saying change the technique no. i'm just saying change the way it was taught because yeah. often techniques are taught like i just mentioned mm -hmm. in falcune uh, often they're taught they do them in a set but they couldn't apply them in reality yes right yeah. uh, there are many movements in sets when you yeah. watch someone do a set at a demonstration uh the nationals or whatever any oh, demonstration oh, um, <laughs> yeah and you see them do these moves and you can blatantly see they haven't got a clue what they're doing mm -hmm. with them yeah. because they're just doing them to look good yeah. and and uh, don't get me wrong they must have trained really hard to look good but you know yeah. that's yeah. you know it's just not the way um no no um for me it's got to have a use well i think that's isn't that the most important isn't that why you do martial art i mean yes for the you know yeah it, what's it certainly point? should be the reason why you teach well you don't teach to look good well, you don't teach to be a teacher you teach because you want to teach yeah. and because you've got something to teach yeah but you 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 know you mentioned teaching there what there's not a better way than to understand your stuff better than by teaching but we've mentioned that before on other podcasts mm -hmm. but it's true yeah. it's too true but yeah. you know i i think when i mean we would just discussing... because you want to teach doesn't qualify you to be a teacher yeah just remember that learn mm -hmm. make sure yeah. you learn from a good person we were we were discussing the other day what, what were we discussing about um you know the the problem with you know spending a lot of time doing the hand blocks and kick blocks in classes when uh, not that you know we, we were just chewing the fat so i don't know you know maybe the problem is the wrong word but we were basically saying you know people need to spend a lot more time trying to pick apart these sets trying to apply these moves you know and and, and become a bit more uh, organic with their thinking i mean you know mm. do you know what i mean but you know yeah well you've only done. got like an hour a week yeah so. well that's the problem steve isn't yeah. it yeah 
yeah. that is the problem. Or you've got a big class, what are you going to do? You know. Yeah. Um, Can't teach everybody all no, the time. No, it's it's a tough one. You know. But um, it's still your responsibility to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You can't just say, "Oh, well, you know, teach you from our." Uh, take it take the money and run that's that's not how you teach that's yeah. not to, that's not the good reason to teach no no so. no absolutely um oh before we go on to questions I guess i was on uh, the internet the other day i found a um a website that does that makes up acronyms do you know what an acronym is <laughs> Do you know, you what know I don't know anything about computers. Right. No, so not, com English, not computers. I know that. I'm just going to say right, uh, that right. English isn't my forte either. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> you know, like it's a series of letters that each one of those letters represents a word, but it actually ends up making a word anyway. Anyway, you can do reverse acronyms. So you can you can give the computer a word, right? And it and it and it comes up as an acronym, right? And the first one I did, and I'm not joking, right? You uh -huh. you'll find this hilarious. I just spoken to you or something, so you, you I, I typed in the word guardian, right? <laughs> right, and this is what came up genuinely first time, right? Grubby, unpleasant, appalling. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Retaliatory, disheartened, inarticulate, argumentative, and narcissistic. <laughs> That, that, about, that guess... about covers your act, doesn't it? <laughs> I wondered why people kept looking at me like that when I had that sash on. <laughs> and then I had some fun. Then, then I realised, because it was my first time, I realised I chose all negative words for, for it to come out. That's why they're all so... Oh, I typed in Laugar and I got... And I put positive words, you know, because, you know flying the flag and all that and it came up as lovely affirmative upright genius active and right and then mm. i was in a bitch mood i typed in wing chun and it came out wicked insipid nondescript ghastly <laughs> criminal hurt untoward and nasty i thought i'll stop there <laughs> oh anyway so that was fun you've made your case is that it through act oh acronym. yeah there you go there you go not that i'm bitching but i just thought that was hilarious the first thing i typed in anyway um right so we've got some letters we've got some mail um mm -hmm. that we've got to gonna read out and as it is um people you know people send us letters and you know they 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 want me to uh to sort of not not and i say me but bear with me this is they want me to fix them up with an answer and you know, my name's James, and so I decided a, a completely unoriginal title for this little segment. I'm going to call it Jim Will Fix It. Cue the music. No, 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 I'm not joking. You do realise what happened to Jim in the end. Listen, what that, bl listen, that guy, it, it was appalling. I mean, for, for, for him to go outside with that haircut was just shocking. <laughs> <laughs> so if that, if that theme tune, people, makes you feel uneasy, you know, whatever. Um, anyway, I, honestly, I'm just having a joke. Um, right, first letter, Mr. Newby. Okay. It was, say what you want about that show, it was an amazing theme tune, I thought, don't mm. you? I thought that was a good theme tune. I can't remember it. Oh, you just Never listened it, to it. Jack. You just listened to it. Never mind. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> it's called it's be... editing. It's called yeah. editing. Oh. All right. Sorry. All right. So you see, what's good music? Okay. So, all right. The first first letter um, again from Anon. It gets around this Anon. Yeah, I know him well. <laughs> right. So this is actually a nice letter. So it says, Dear James and Steve, uh, I'm cracking through your podcasts, exclamation mark. Please do keep them coming, if at all possible. I have more queries slash points for debate. But firstly, 
I wanted to just say thanks to James in all of this. Do you know what? Oh, I, I like him already. I like this is this is the kind of you know <laughs> listenership we want. You know the upscale, you know intellectual oh. types. This is what I like. Right. Oh, let me just say it again. Ah, oh, firstly, I wanted to just say thanks to James in all of this. Let's move on, shall so, we? Let's oh, move oh, on. Sorry, I was just just wallowing my time. Now in a moment, your pointed questioning is very helpful for us practitioners of the art. I love nothing more than the conversations that open up more questions and points for clarification, aka debate, which often ends up being about interpretation. Moves on. Chop choice. Probably they probably just mm -hmm. mean. Prove it. Prove it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we waffle on a bit, don't we? Anyway, yeah. and it goes on. Sharp Choi. Three shuffles, five shouts. Where are the shouts? And I think I might do four shuffles, having a shuffle on both the last forward Phoenix Eye movements just before dropping into the horse stance. Okay. Now, of course, Sharp Choi is our third set. Um, we refer to the Sharp Choi form as drilling punches. At a master seminar last year, Grandmaster Yao asked his audience what Chop Choi translated to. I said, drilling punches, feeling slightly set up. Grandmaster Yao smiled and said, I wasn't entirely wrong, but that Chop is a stabbing like a dart. Uh, and finishes off with, where are the shouts? Is the question I have for most forms and often get a different or vague answer relating to that. So. Sharp choy. Five shuffle uh five shouts, three shuffles. Where are they, Mr. Newbie? Every time you are a straight fist out, yeah. that's a shout. Okay, but then there's more than and one of them five is, no. shouts. Yeah, no, there isn't much more than five shouts. Well the double one is the last shout. Okay, right. Just bear with me, right? Are you doing it now? No, I'm not doing it. Well, oh, I'm trying okay. to explain it, right? So you do okay, your bow, on. you open up, you block you, yeah. you do your three strikes. That's a Shout, shout yeah. on the first on the third one on the third one right that's fine so that's yeah. one shout yeah then you do your horse stance your elbow and you twist 90 degrees go down single leg stand stand up do a straight punch is that another shout yes straight punch right so that's two then you turn 90 degrees do your walk upward and downward do another elbow you turn 90 degrees you do a punch then that's a shout right then you go down single leg stance turn 180 degrees up for and by the way that was your first shuffle that's just gone then yeah, you do a shuffle, shuffle and a strike yeah. so that's your second shuffle and your fourth shout right mm -hmm. then you turn I, i'm not sure if there's i've got a i'm i'm sorry i was ahead of you until you said shuffle because um you do you, three you, shuffles you, at the at the end yeah, right yeah so your first shuffle is after the second elbow before you go down for the second time. When you go down after a 180 degree turn, that's your first shuffle. No, that's a step, the first one. Oh, Jesus Christ. I've just Christ. done it. <laughs> right. no. You know what? Now, okay, listeners, we're both standing up one's in canada and one's in the U uk right and we're both doing the set i'm, tell I'm front. telling you right <laughs> after no i know listen i'm a i listen to everything you say and i i know for a f i know i know after the second elbow you you step across cross stance you turn out don't you you block you shuffle punch right after the second elbow then you go down for the second time on a single leg kneeling stance rather then you mm -hmm. stand up 180 degrees you do another shuffle punch you you just carry on talking i'm right. doing it after you've <laughs> done the second shuffle punch you pivot 90 degrees i'm to not right. listening james no for god's sake oh god oh my lord says you know are you there hello uh hello james oh yeah you're right <laughs> have you found those these elusive shuffles yet i've found the first shuffle that's, right that's the one you were talking about okay and, uh, yeah thank Hang you I'm putting, my, I'm putting my mic back on right right okay this yep. is this is the the, the quality <laughs> <laughs> broadcasting <laughs> this is what you're paying your good money for people 
<laughs> Listen, right. Yeah, you found okay, your first on. shuffle. Was it where I yeah. said it was? Uh, the first one, yeah. Right. And then you go down 180 degrees, second yeah. shuffle. Yes. And yes. then the third shuffle is when you pull back, when you lean back in the double strokes. No, that's no, th that's not the shuffle. That's not where the shuffle is. The the last strike. You don't think? No, I promise you, because you've never, ever, ever, ever told <laughs> Sorry. me that. The third shuffle is after you turn 90 degrees, you do another straight punch and a shuffle. I didn't get that far, James. I, I, I went through the set only to get that first shuffle. Right, okay. So... so You've done your, you've got your first shuffle, you've got your second shuffle, right? I've then got you, to go through it on my bed now. Okay. Then you pivot 90 degrees, so your right foot is now forward, and you do another shuffle punch, right? That's your three shuffles. Then your last technique, well, not your last technique, your last but one technique, is shifting your weight back on the back leg for your double punch with the uh, phoenix eye fist but you're not shuffling there you're just straightening up the back leg yeah yeah that's right the shuffle is before it is right it? yes so there's three yeah. shuffles yeah that's your three shuffles and yeah so three shuffles i just done it okay <laughs> so see this is this is why you pay me the big <laughs> yeah <laughs> right so what but what she was saying was that's where the shuffles are right yeah so my my thing now is where the shouts right so there's only, there's only three shuffles over right and there's plus sh three shuffles sh they, i think uh, did did they say they did four shuffles yeah so sh what they what they may well be counting that hanging last, back and then yes, forward as a shuffle yes that so, so there's nothing wrong with calling that a shuffle but it's not but it's, it's not a shuffle. It, well no no it can be a shuffle it totally depends basically what's happening someone's going to grab you and as they grab you 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 manage to get back you mm. you part their arms or strike out with your your hands mm -hmm. and their arms literally target you know guide your hand yeah. it towards their collarbone or chest or whatever you want to hit yeah. and and so as you place your foot back you, you can call it a shuffle but the problem is a lot of people end up coming back as a hanging stance yes. and that's why they shuffle yes. because they're on a hanging stance yes. so they end up looking like it's shuffling but you don't need to come back on a hanging stance no. because if you did and person was attacking you and you try to push his arms away he would overpower you and he would keep on pushing you backwards because yeah. you're only standing on one leg yeah. because you're on a hanging stance mm -hmm. so consequently what you tend to do is lean backwards certainly but you've got a much longer step because your yeah. other heel is still on the ground that's right so, so right so, so where you you've yeah. got a much more powerful position so and is it is it i, I didn't mean to interrupt up, but I just I just have to sort of make sure people no, that, are listening understand yeah. when we yeah. talk about this leaning back okay you, you, I not your back to, no not no, your back no. just the position is back yeah yes the your posture is, is posture is back on the back leg excuse yeah. me that's what I meant so yeah basically could you interpret it as a kind of 60 40 stance if you like 60 yeah, percent yeah. on the back leg and 40 yeah. percent on the front but on at the this heel point yeah but your, your heel it's mm -hmm. not it, you, your whole front foot at this point can be flat on the floor it can be but there's no need for it yeah. but but if you put heel up yeah. you've you've got more ability to move backwards yeah and if you if you leave the leg where it is yeah. the foot where it is not necessarily and but but you know it's and it's just it doesn't really matter no but, but it, it, it's, mastio it's, tends to do it with a with a toes up in the air right. heel un onto the heel okay. so i tend to do it that way um the um the, the the power delivered in those final two strikes after you're lean i say leaning back shifting your weight backwards is purely mm -hmm. the straightening of the back leg and sort of like in sharp choy you're coiling your feet a lot aren't you you're turning yeah. them into an eight stance and that is in effect um, coiling do you know what i mean like uh, I don't, no you're not not in an eight stance for that uh, oh oh yes i see what you mean eight, eight stance turned in yeah you just, when you when you turn yeah. on an angle yes. yeah when you turn 90 degrees if you turn the the yeah. the, the the rear foot is it kind no the, the forward foot first if you turn the forward yeah. foot first yeah. as you turn you know one direction or the other 90 yeah. degrees you will end up in a a, a very tight stance yeah. and what that allows you to do is to spring the stance forward yes. so, in a much better way yeah so that mm -hmm. spring 
of of a, of a stance going forward can can in in a small way could it be interpreted to the very last movement when you're delivering that double strike because you're shifting your weight forward and springing nice and strong before you step into a horse stance well you're springing but it's not it's not an eight stance then is it's it you're, not an eight stance, you're leaning back what no. the point i was trying to make was like the spring the spring I, th I think what happens with it is because the person is grabbing at your shoulders if you want or grabbing at your um uh, what do they call it? lapel yeah? Yeah, yeah so as they go to grab at your lapel with both hands and you're slicing your hands through the middle and mm. bouncing off those hands that are coming towards you are literally guiding your hands yeah. so all you're doing is just dropping your knuckles and rotating your arms straight yeah. down at the target that's given to you yeah. it's literally given to you by his arms and yeah. guiding your knuckles into the chest or the the collarbone yeah. so it's it's not the same principle it's not the same mechanics that does that but um you know it's just it's just as you know basically just dropping those knuckles into a nice yeah a nice given target okay so we've established where the shuffles are thank god, yeah. thank god. hopefully thank you yeah to get get me up off my bed to do that now Did let's you? just clarify just very quickly and let's try and be brief where the shouts are now you say for every straight arm strike there's a shout and it's fine yeah it's obviously not the three Obvious. you don't shout three times in the three no, first techniques no, no you shout on the last yeah. one so let's then... just let me just in my head i'm counting the straight strikes so from the bow you step out do your three punches one there's one yep, shout yep. okay you do your 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 horse stance into an elbow then you step yep, across yep. Like yep. and twist twist and there is another yeah blocked, and there's another strike there so there's another strike. So that's two yeah get down on your knees yep knee yep step up strike yep. step forward and strike. strike and that's three is the it third yep right so now twist you twist to the side yep double block yep upper yeah and downwards and downwards as well elbow cross yep. step yep twist now shuffle and, and strike right so that's four okay yep down 180 degree turn yep. twist shuffle strike that's five now we've got another 90 degree turn. oh the other one is a double one no 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 is that, the next you sure one, that's five that's five i've just counted okay them. the next okay. one is a 90 degree turn to the right and another strike okay seven do, do i should i say seven instead of five i think perhaps we should say seven so we need to retract I think, I our think, previous statements so oh issue my out god yeah it's been a while apology. since i've had to count oh my god seven could be seven strikes do you know yeah. what? I, I, think, I just know it was an odd number i think now people are just never going to believe a word we they're, say they're never going to believe us and we'd like to <laughs> we'd like to formally issue i think we've got to get the press uh, involved in this our press call um <laughs> we've we've got we got to issue a retraction and yeah. uh, uh of the i original. don't know how we're going to do that it's yeah. going to be tough it's going to be tough but yeah. we'd like yeah. to thank thank you to the uh, yeah. person who wrote this lovely yeah. letter not only because you mentioned how good i am but for, <laughs> for exposing our ignorance we love that <laughs> we should have paid more attention to how many shouts there were in well i i just i came up with a number didn't i because basically i just meant every single Listen, straight punch we don't have time for for newbie kundo this Apologies. is about Laogar. <laughs> this is a Laogar podcast pure yeah. and simple all right so there we go yep. guys so you have got you have got three shuffles you can get seven strikes every time you're striking out i apologize i yeah this is one time in my life i've probably said five <laughs> but really all it is is just direct any straight punch yeah. any 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 punch that is done with the straight you know the straight yeah. arm straightens yeah. out the arm yeah um and, and that's it including the double one yeah ab absolutely because there's a lot yeah. of power and you know generate yeah. we call it ging don't we when we're uh, generating yeah. and putting effort in or, or chum chum yeah. Uh, just remember the dog food <laughs> pedigree i mean the, the japanese they call it kiai and stuff like that but you know that's well, kind of yeah, like, that's a, a, shout, that's a yeah. shout more sound yeah. but we t you know um uh, out breaths on you know yeah it's just an explosive breath yeah yeah um, yeah pe people people scream and they when they throw punches they you know yeah kind of thing i mean that was very um reduced in effort of course yeah and then but the the best way to throw out these techniques is just to go that kind yeah. of thing yeah sure. rather than uh, absolutely <laughs> you know? yeah yeah no it's just uh, 
What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. Still uh, young at heart, James. Still, still young at heart. You are, yeah. Well, you're, you're only as young as the, the woman you feel, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, oh, Jack is not listening to this, is she? <laughs> uh, right. Mm. So the implication was... Uh, at the end of this 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 lovely letter, and it was a lovely letter, by the way. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, that other forms, it, whilst doing other forms, um, a bit worried, a bit um, uh, not worried, a bit um, vague as to when when shouts should be performed on other techniques. But basically, just any outward, straight punches, you know, uh, yeah, straight punches, really, and you know, kind of explosive movements. Yeah. It's it's not even called a shout. We say seven shouts or five, sh whatever you want to call it. I don't seven, care. Seven, it's, it's, seven. It's it's yeah, seven. Uh, whatever. I don't care the point <laughs> is that they you, you don't shout per se yeah. you know that's like weather kind of <laughs> shouting yeah it's not that it's a, like a an explosion mm. of using your lungs yeah. your stomach you know tanchen if you want that kind of thing yeah. that it's a cough yes. i'd rather call it a cough than a shout yeah. it's a closed mm. mouth if if anything <laughs> cough yeah. and and it's and that is called um, ging yeah. and you're applying ging to anything that is an explosive external um, forward energy yeah okay so you are just you know if someone grabs you you can do exactly the same thing to escape if someone grabs your wrist and you haven't got the strength to get them off and you want to do a movement you just cough bam, and as you do that immediately do the movement and they will be freer it you'll be looser it kind of reverberates uh, through your whole body doesn't it when you're like, it's, it, you know, yeah it's, 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 a, it's a it's a massive ex extent of energy yeah i mean j imagine a weight weight lifter trying to lift a weight yeah. it's that yeah. it's that uh, kind of yeah. cough yeah. not not the uh, yeah. but you know guys it's like you, you, you know i was you, in star wars with that don't you <laughs> <laughs> You know, jab jab of the hut, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Drinking a big thing of Bailey's. Right. Yeah. The, <laughs> the, 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 the implication you just made there was that it's, it's all to do with this, uh, you know, the ging and ging, technique. Yeah. But, the, mm -hmm. you know, you're combining technique with the, with the energy, with the ging. Well, to achieve effort. effort. Yeah, combine go, effort, some effort. Call, but know. I have to warn people, if they are going to put ging into every single movement in a set, they'd never get through the set. No. Because it's, it's quite explosive, it's quite hard. So it's always good to do a set in directions. Mm -hmm. So when you do a set, you go, ba 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 right the way, one direction. Yeah with the ging and then turn and face which is why sometimes when you watch people do martial arts chinese martial arts uh, you'll see them do ba 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 and then stop and sort of sway a little bit yes. on their leg in their stance and oh, they'll yeah. just sway and yeah. ready to go and then they'll do it again yeah. and it's because you if they put that much effort into it you just when i did that thing in the the 30th anniversary that uh, bot king kong yeah jesus christ i nearly died oh yeah <laughs> I right. but i tell you what Ooh. but you, yeah. you but it was such an amazing rendition of a form i mean you know well, I, I don't know the form but for christ's sake if you look at it it's alive mm. and it's because of all these you know yeah. that's your it's accumulated alive. Drink. it's, it's alive, alive. Mr. Doobie. <laughs> well, but it was a really good form and Pete, mm, and you know you. I, i'm not just saying that like you know but it was a great rendition of a form no. if you look at it neighbors said it too when they met me in the car park oh, I know. so that's I'm, I'm i'm not blowing any trumpets here <laughs> <laughs> we like you're the best uh, yeah yeah anyway <laughs> We, we talked about that actually when we and who says he wasn't about... qualified yeah. he's a doctor <laughs> <laughs> i tell you mr newbie you are you are an unappreciated in your time you are right. <laughs> go. right then we must press on we've got another oh excuse me sorry we can't press on we've just got a very briefly um, oh uh, yeah before was... you go on I just, sorry i Hang really on. do go it on was, go it was on. another part of the question um, oh um sorry hang on i'm trying to think now uh, fill in. I've got, hang on, let me read this. 
da, 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 da. Okay, well, I was going to say she did mention the um, the, the knuckle being oh, called a, a there you stab. Go. That's it. There you go. And 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 I've said to you in many podcasts, you can't interpret. Chinese very easily mm. and then that goes for Mastia too so mm. with when he described it to us it's it's like a twist and a thrust which in effect is a bloody stab <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> that's why they're called cut and thrust swords for God's sake yeah, yeah. you know they're cut and thrust swords but you either slash with them or stab with them oh, or, yeah. you know okay. thrust with them and and or you can do both yeah. cut and thrust sword is to thrust to stab mm -hmm. it's the same bloody thing so it's just it's just a play with words in the end Chinese is difficult to you know but for us he explained that to thrust and twist uh, like a you were stabbing a, a rice into the ground you know yeah. like a, a not not bloody little pip but um a proper plant yeah. of rice when you plant in a paddy field mm. But it'll be that, a long that's day how if you described it. Planting a yeah. little pip, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, just, it would. <laughs> the, well, I don't know. You just throw them, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it. like at a wedding. <laughs> yeah. Um, a, a big uh, a thing I I notice a lot of people doing in chop choy when they're going down onto single uh, kneeling stands. Yeah. Um, they they're, they're rotating the arms. Uh, obviously, yeah, you know, creating yeah. a bit of power. Certainly, the, yeah. when you go down for the first time, your right hand is kind of making a circular rotationary movement. And wrists. Uh, and wrists, yep, all the rest of it. Now, a lot of people um, do that move quite exaggerated sometimes, which, hey, fine, some moves mm. you do exaggerate, whatever, depending on what you're Depends on for. what stage Exa you're yeah, at. Yeah, stage. Yeah. Now, but however, a lot of people end up doing the strike to the floor, but they end up yeah, doing what is, what is essentially a, a hammer fist okay and if yeah. you if you imagine you're hitting with the the, the bottom of your fist out mm. now that is not a hammer fist it's a thrust on the floor but you have to yeah. find the moment during the rotation when you can um thrust it down and you know, it's, you it's, see what I mean? it's yeah it's the wrist yeah. you're doing a rotation with the hand but people forget that the wrist is rotating in itself with the hand so it's a it's a loose wrist yeah. until it strikes and yeah. and it's like knocking on a door with the with the with the forefinger knuckle yeah you know the four knuckle you're just you're just knocking on the door of course you may well be because you're going down low yeah. you're trying to avoid the hands and 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 striking yeah. attacking the leg as he's trying to kick well, you yeah, we, so you hit you, sure. you know you you could be hitting him that way yeah it's just it's, we did talk about this on um uh, all the foot when it's standing yeah, yeah we did do a lot we did talk about this um i think on podcast yeah. or something so we won't go yeah. too deep into it but essentially yeah so in answer yeah, to just, your question we can always send you a little video a yeah, clip or whatever if you need to know just problem. to explain yeah absolutely we well, gotta have something to do during uh this i uh, have this yeah yeah i go outside with my cup of tea and i get the kids to hold a video and i'll go there you go do that <laughs> okay and so can agree i think that kind of covers that one um second question all right uh, again this is from anon from anon thank yeah. you anon hi stephen james i was listening to you talk about being a good attacker on the podcast i'm a large guy and when doing the hand blocks if i can see someone is too close to me i have to move then they follow me so we're still close even if i mention to them so I presume what he's trying to say is that you get too close when you start in the the, um, the, the, the hand block. Um, mm. I'm doing a positive punch, but not trying mm. to take heads off. And I can see that I'm going to hit them almost every time. That's um, a good thing. Okay. Sometimes don't I'm, aim at their face. Aim at right. their chest. Sometimes they're a higher grade than me, but I'm having to slow down my attack so that they can do the block. You got me thinking. From what you said, am I now a bad attacker for slowing down so they can perform the block as yes. I'm trying to help them or should I just hit them? Don't help them. Aim at the chest. Do the thing that we talked about before with the, with the palm. Push them rather than punch them because they'll soon realize that the distance that you can travel is going to, you know, it's a disadvantage to them. So to stand too close to you. And of course, if you are stepping, you're going to, you're going to take much more range. So, um, you know, yeah, tell them just step and push them. And then, then they'll start to move backwards just at the right distance to stop that push being, you know, to sort of dissipate the energy of the push. Mm. Then you can start to punch them and they'll, they'll have the capability and timing to be able to, yeah. 
divert that with their block and, and obviously have a much better stance to do so. Um, what they don't want to be doing is stepping back with the leg too close to the other leg so that they end up right in front of the punch. They need to be consolidating in a good hip width stance yeah. and, and uh, the, the block will naturally be off to the side then slightly, yeah. not totally. Okay, so in yeah, so in 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 short, you're a bad attacker. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, uh, don't okay. be, don't change your attack for anybody. You know, if you want, you've got to see. The thing is, with people who do martial arts, especially beginners, uh, lower grades, uh, they need to prove to themselves that it works. Otherwise, what's the point in them doing it? Mm. So, in order for you to prove that it works t for you, you've got to see. If it works for the other person because and so if you attack him as best you possibly can okay obviously bearing in mind their capabilities the quality their you know their experience and so on but once they get really good if you can attack them as well as you can you will know whether or not that technique works that they're using to defend your punch if it works then you'll get you know stopped mm. and if it doesn't work they'll get hit it's as simple as that so the better you do the attack the better for them and the better for you because you will be become more confident in what you're learning absolutely this I is think that's a uh, yeah, no, simple that's, philosophy yeah isn't absolutely it? Yeah. i think i think what you know it, it's a reason not necessarily that but poorly done hand blocks and kick blocks are a reason why people can give you know uh, uh, you know styles that employ hand blocks and kick blocks as a training exercise a bad name because yeah. you, you you don't you train them people observe yeah and, yeah and and you like take let's just imagine you got some some mma guy watching looking in on yeah. hand blocks and kick blocks What's that don't say? work that don't work yeah, don't work and it's like don't work you know <laughs> right it's not meant to work it's meant to be a vehicle in which to train on yeah it you know it's just the same as you stand there and you punch a pad and you go oh that don't work mm. because you then do this or he'd then do that well you're just tra practicing a single punch yeah you know it's it's like anything you know mm. uh shuffling skipping don't work <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so so shut up you know just just yeah. train in there's lots yeah. of different ways you can train it's just a vehicle yeah. uh no one would imagine for a second and anyone do, does think that uh, you know someone's going to throw one punch and you're going to block it and hit them back is is crazy yeah. because it ain't going to happen like that unless they're drunk or unless they're just absolute stupid but if you if you're looking at a, someone who's a decent angry individual you know he's not going to stand there and just lay he's not even going to throw a straight punch mm -hmm. so you know we train for threat straight punches because they're the most direct once you've got good at that straight punch you'll be able to see other punches coming mm -hmm. because they take a lot longer to develop. So, you know, don't don't kind of sort of confuse yourself with training to fighting. It's not too many people do that. Yeah. Confuse, you know, training with fighting. Mm -hmm. And and of course, a lot of people are the people who are actually training. They confuse their ability to fight because they've trained so much, mm -hmm. but they don't train the right thing. They don't train to fight. They only train the techniques well any MMA fighter or anyone else for that matter will tell you if you're just going to train that technique and you never train any fighting you never gain any fighting experience and, and you never actually perform a fight you're not going to experience you're not going to know what fighting's like because it's it's a psychological thing as well as a, me a, a physical uh, yeah. encounter yeah. it's very psychological I mean how many people would stand up against a person who looked really nasty to them you know and go okay now I've got to knock him down mm. uh, you know how many people want to do that you know well, you don't want to do that mm. the good thing about self-defense is sometimes you don't have that choice yeah. it's just happens and as long as you've trained res you know responsibly and and you know really hard you have the capability of or you possibly might have the capability of we don't know because we don't know you to be able to suddenly respond well, and you know the, depending the, on the target well it's like I, I i firmly believe that um that it's the response you cannot it's the psychological response you cannot train in a class and what i mean by that is expansive right so just bear with me steve 
Because yeah. what you're going to say now is, well, the more training you do, the more confident you get with your physicality, the more um, the more likely you are to have a response. But what, actually, I'm going to go right off on another tangent. Well, but go okay. on. <laughs> but what, what, well, yeah. Now go know, on. You carry on. Carry yeah. On. So what you can't train in the class in terms of fighting ability is your psychology during a stressful encounter or you know confrontation yeah. some yeah. people right some people will buckle some people will run some people will hide some people will fight back and you will not know what you're made of until that instant you will not know. absolutely but yeah. i have seen the quietest people that i know really sort of you know timid people uh, mm -hmm. as people on you know listen on the battlefields in afghanistan turn into warriors you know yeah. at a flick of a switch and you don't know who's what and that's it's yeah. an amazing thing so yeah. you know don't worry about it but hey sometimes when you're pushed up against the wall you just fight you just give you what the hell yeah. you know it's down to an individual yeah it really is down to an individual and indivi uh, state yeah. and and i think a lot of people who want to pride themselves with being a fighter who actually have never experienced it yeah. and then go up and say okay you know my martial arts better than yours let's try it out yeah. haven't got a clue what they're talking about yeah. you know their martial art might be good but they are not exactly they just haven't got the balls and when i say ball i mean the the, the mental capacity so they they suddenly confront someone and the first couple of moves they suddenly realize they're in yeah. deep crap yeah. So I want you to, I, I was going to use the analogy of, of shooting because, you, you know, you've done some pistol shooting in the USA and, and wherever. Yeah. And, and But let's just imagine you're going through one of those courses with yeah. the, the various targets jumping up and shooting yeah. and you're, you're, you're becoming brilliant at it. And you shoot, shoot, uh, innocent target comes up, don't shoot, yeah. baddie comes up, shoot, innocent target, don't shoot. Then you get into a real situation where you have to shoot someone for real. Yeah. Exactly. Are you capable of it? Yeah. Right. Do you see? That, yeah. And or will you just kill the innocent anyway? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Shouldn't have been there. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> you know, you're absolutely there's, right. There's that's playing exactly and there's doing. What, yeah, exactly. And so so people can't yeah. say martial art is better, that martial art is better. All they can say is the science works or the science doesn't. And in most cases that I've seen in many martial arts, the science just does not work. And it doesn't matter what they call it, doesn't matter what the name is. Yeah. Often, a lot of that is in the science of, you know, um, people who d decide to do MMA or they decide to do UFC or they decide to do, you know, boxing. Mm -hmm. they, their science quite obviously doesn't work. They've tried to, you know, train themselves in such a way because they believe their science is better than the next guy's. They come up against them they're in trouble mm -hmm. you know and that's with people who've got the attitude to fight yeah. so it's it's you know science is extremely important as but of course you've got to be capable of fighting before yeah. you even do that but self-defense as i say is a different animal because you don't have to stand in front of someone initially it's it's the response you do so it's it's far more um kinesthetic it's it's far more reactive mm. you know it's like uh, being a racing driver, you know, you, okay, you've got to get in the car in the first place. Suddenly, you know, you're confronted by a, a deadly situation. It's how you respond to it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no, we're not saying you have to be in a fight to validate yourself as a martial artist. No, because, no, we're not saying that you at know, all. It, you know, everybody has a capability. You just, you, the, the point I'm trying to make, but, and but, but we are you don't know your capability. You sorry, yeah. you, the point I was trying to get across was you don't know your own capability until such time happens but the, yeah. the harder you train the the chances are the more the chance are, you got exactly the yeah. odds are going to yeah. be more in your favor so yeah. but you know and particularly with self-defense which yes. is what the whole thing's about yeah. yeah now nowadays that's what it's all about yeah, no one trains hard enough today no. like they did in the old days to be capable of doing the things that they would have done in the old days on a battlefield no one has the mentality and the credit the, the capability of doing those things very yeah. very few people ever trained to that kind of capability yeah. so it's been transformed and the way it's been transformed is those people who possibly have got that mentality have gone into boxing 
or yeah. into oh, the, full contact. The, 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 yeah, they want something that, that that satiates their 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 needs, their ta- yeah, their, their mental physical needs, yeah. and their mental needs. And yeah. when you, like you said, you go into boxing first th- first thing you're hitting bags you're skipping then you're getting yeah. in the ring you're sparring it feels yeah. real now yeah. it's not that it's any less real in in studying traditional martial arts but you think of the scope of things that we have to do but in yeah. the old days you would have trained like a mofo you would have been yeah. training like a you know, oh my god so you would have done everything but the the yeah. reality is and I don't like saying the reality is, but the reality is most people are going to be training two hours a week, you know, and then, you know, may, you know, maybe doing yeah, a bit of practice in the, in the back of the mirrors. Yeah, and that's yeah. it. And it doesn't work like that. It's, no. it's not, you know, it's a sort of level of devotion that you have to have and a mentality and a mindset. Yeah. So, you know. But, but remember one thing, anybody who's training like that, don't be disheartened by no. the fact that you haven't got the time to train. No, don't the be. fact is that if you have got devotion, if you have got dedication to what you do and you learn the scientific principles, yeah. then you eventually can teach those yeah. scientific principles. And the person you teach or the people you teach, one of them may have that capability, that yeah. mentality, and you therefore have continued that style Absolutely. The, the right way, yeah. not, not just make it up and then pretend you're a freaking yeah. master yeah. because that is just it, you're not helping anyone and yeah. you're certainly not helping yourself because you just end up yeah. looking like stupid well no I, I certainly wasn't casting aspersions on people training for you know what little time they no no I, I know you what, weren't i just wanted what, to leave yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Let that out yeah. there i wanted yeah. to put that no, out it's, there it's absolutely right i think any, you know we, any, we've we've any... yeah, yeah we've all struggled to to get time to train yeah. we've all you know had you know big jobs or family and whatever yeah. and oh, and they've, we've tried to keep it up and and we just you know, to do our best to keep it up and and there's nothing wrong in you know doing that but just keep it you know keep it mental keep you know if you're a waiter kick the door open as you go into the oh, kitchen that is what one of my you know. guys does all the time you yeah. know uh you know one of my open students, the door with your wrist i tell you what he'll go he, he goes in all these restaurants because he delivers food and he'll just he says oh i i used the harvest hand to open the door the other day i'm like oh really <laughs> i did a front kick on the door <laughs> so, you know so in his yeah. head you know he's he's it's, he's yeah he's, he's mentally training. Cons- so yeah, he's he's constantly training, training. It. and it's like you know the friggin yeah you know, mr miyagi he had it right all the time wash it yeah, pretend did. you're doing a block there you go see mm-hmm. so wipe on wipe off <laughs> send it to floor right then okay we must <laughs> right then <laughs> oh mr newbie oh i don't know we have a bit of fun don't take it too my, seriously yeah guys. my don't wife's just bought a, 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 a she collects barbie dolls you know that don't you Oh, yeah, but they're not Barbie, are they? They're, they're like those dolls. Oh, no, they're all sorts. Oh, oh no, they're got, she's got all sorts. She's got Barbie dolls, but she's just got this new one. It's uh, it's called uh, the Divorce Barbie, apparently. <laughs> yes, interesting. The Divorce uh, apparently, Yeah, Divorce Barbie. And apparently, the reason it's called Divorce Barbie is because it, it comes with all the Ken stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. That was a bit oh. sexist, that wasn't it? Oh, I apologise. It's all right. No. <laughs> hey, hey, it's oh. our podcast. Oh, we've we've gone through it all. We've had Jimmy Savile. We've had <laughs> <laughs> sexism. Well, that, that was my we're that not, was my counter. We're not, yeah, we're, we're not very woke, are we? Oh well. No. Um, yeah, mind I say that flipping out. You were woke before there was woke. You know all your <laughs> you know female champions and whatnot. So <laughs> anyway, um, right we got to talk about, I want to talk about uh, Back Pie Jern, the okay. seventh set. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I hand, I, I, I hand it over to you, Mr. Noobs. Well, we know that the Back Pie Jern used to be after Black Sash because of the previous, as we talked about um, before, uh, uh, the other set, Chow So Far and various other things. Was, so, uh, I have a on. theory. I'm sorry to interrupt at this early stage in your explanation. Okay. Was it after Black Sash as well because it had the soon Sam Toy the dynamic heart kick? No, no, that wasn't the reason. It's just simply the number of sets. That's all. But but so. I'm sorry, but wasn't the dynamic heart kick? And it sounds very esoteric, people. Sorry. It does doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> wasn't the dynamic heart kick moved to after um, take? Was Black it moved Sash. after Black Sash? Even though it's in Back Pie Jern, 
mm -hmm. because it was uh, no. such a, you know, in quotation marks, deadly technique. Well, there's so many different, uh, well, a dead, well, as we just discussed, <laughs> a deadly technique is I, only what people can actually do. I'm so, taking the um, piss, people, I'm taking the... <laughs> But yeah. but was am I right in saying it was after Black Sash the kick? The, the kick's after Black Sash, yeah. Jim yeah. Sam Toy. Sorry, with, um... it used to, right. Hang yeah. on, hang on. I've got that all modelled up. What did you? It call? used to be taught before Black Sash the kick, didn't it? I don't know. Yes. I don't, I've never. I, think I never it did. did it before. I think the kick used well, to be yeah, taught maybe before we trained Black it. Sash, mm, and then maybe we trained it, but... they removed it and put it after Black Sash because it was deemed to be like a deadly technique or whatever. <laughs> But even though, even though it's in the seventh set. Yeah, well, we're, maybe we're talking anyway. the 70s there, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, maybe, so, maybe. You know, if you want to call it a, you know, a I'm, dynamic heart kick. I'm talking... Deadly technique, yeah. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to. <laughs> anyway, I, I interrupted Shall I get you. on then? Yeah, sorry, yeah. I interrupted you with my new chef. Go on then. Oh, yeah. Uh, Buck Pudger, yeah, okay. The eight peaks of a, a Quantum Province, isn't it? Yeah. Buck Pai Jern. Yeah, well, the, anyway. I thought it was Kong Sai. But Is Quan, Quan, yeah, Kong, well, I don't know. I don't know. It's I don't Kong, care. Kong Sai um, province it's where the temple is. too late is. now. All right, okay, yeah, I know. But wasn't yeah, the temple, Kwai Ling Temple in Kong Sai province? I don't know. Oh, I don't well. care. All right. I can't, I can't remember. J James? All right, I'm, I'm trying just to... saying. I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> you... You can correct that in an edit. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because I, I really haven't got a clue uh, right now because my mind is on just the movements of the set. Yes. And and you know my attitude about, yeah, you know, know, history because so many people will claim this and claim that and yeah. claim the other and you just go, well, you know what, I'm closing my ears. Yes, but, but, but don't Talk forget. to the hand. Yes. Talk to we, the hand because are, it's a bow. Yeah. We are putting out this podcast in the public domain and you know we'll have our critics. God knows there's plenty of oh. critics. Oh, within yeah. certain organisations, but well, I mean, we are encouraging critics because we do want to learn ourselves. Yes, you absolutely, know, it's encouraging. Absolutely. It's encouraging to find out yeah. what kind of stuff is out there. So yeah. I, I would like to hear from people who, not not just ask me questions, but state things. Oh, we do it like this, and then send me a little video and yeah. go, we do it like this because, and I'll go, oh, that looks brilliant, you know. Yeah. Okay, I, I so love that. The, the, yeah. the, right, so the, in the old syllabus VHS, Master Yao yeah. says that uh, Lao Ga was taught at the Kwai Ling Temple in Kong yeah. Sai province. That yeah. is what he says. That's where I got it from. Doesn't End necessarily of. follow, End doesn't necessarily follow that the eight peaks no. are in the same province. No, I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying that's... Oh, but no, why no. are we arguing about it I then? don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I just let you get on so it, shut up so yeah, I press my yeah. mute button go on then sorry <laughs> so it's it's yeah <laughs> it's really weird because this set does start with an exercise and you know my attitude towards it I don't like calling them exercises but of course certain parts of the form certain parts of the style have to include a certain amount of health exercises you can't find if you're not healthy <laughs> You mentioned Which... exercise. <laughs> you, that was the that was the alarm going off. It's only an exercise alarm. Yeah. Oh right. Excellent. So glad. Yeah. So yeah, it is. A, that's great. I love that. So yeah, it is. It is a point that that people often say. Oh, this movement is just an exercise when they don't know what it's for, and and. You know, unfortunately, there are some parts of forms which are specifically that way inclined, I'm going to say, yeah. to stop that damn thing going off. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, you'll obviously you, you do your first movements forwards, but I'm not going to describe them. because We haven't got the time to go through no, every no. single thing, pushing backwards. Yeah. And then uh, we're lifting our hands up together with our leg. And as our knee comes up, you can imagine you're going to protect your groin as you're pushing those hands up. Now, a lot often people use this push up, like if someone's strangling you, but yeah. if they've got consolidated grip on your neck there ain't no way on earth you're going to just push your hands up like so unless you're much bigger than they are yeah. um, so the idea of doing it is prior to them actually consolidating the hold yeah. so as they go to grab at you you are then pushing those hands up yeah. the hands part 
pushing the hands apart, the other guy's arms apart. Mm. You then are doing that little movement where you are rotating the left hand. And if you consider, when you do the set, as I'm speaking, and you lift up your two palms together and then spread them open slightly, and then you're going to turn towards the little finger in around. And if you can imagine, you're just pushing that guy's jaw sideways, the left side of his face with your left hand, pushing it sideways the other hand is rotating and the spear goes straight into that throat and that's a lovely mo i love that yeah movement. because you're 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 using the hand that turn to in effect open up a target which is when you're all a, well, yeah yeah I, and I, of I course you know there's plenty of that's other one of those yeah that's one of those movements that describes you know if you move the head you change the balance yes. and of course people say oh but he's gonna do this gonna do that when someone loses their balance because their head is turned or moved it, it they find it very difficult to to dis you know once you've disturbed their balance yeah. to throw anything decent so it's it's a really good which is why people i guess naturally hit the face yeah. but you know if you're twisting his head around like so with the one hand and stabbing him in the neck with the other yeah. i think you can pretty much say it's a it's a good technique is it is it fair to say that i don't want to spend too much time on talking about the head but if you control mm -hmm. the head if you have control of the head you effectively do control the body so to speak. well the balance you yeah. you will offset the balance yeah. so it's difficult for someone to fight when they are offset mm. balance Absolutely. because it, it's more over more likely they're going to start to fall over or falter yeah. Yeah. so you know you're doing that then you're going to be those blocks are uh, repeated from the first set the yes. second set that sort of i always say to people look don't think of them as loads of different sets think of them as a set that is developing all the way through so you're using one movement but then you're going to use the same movement in another later set mm. that can be, that is the same movement but used in a different way and for a different reason and there you are with the two moves one's pressing down like as in the first set the other one is twisting mm. as in you know like your number uh, uh six kick block that kind of thing you're doing it there yeah. but it's all it may it's also in other other movements yeah. as well the um the talking about just briefly on the opening of back pie and a big uh, a, a little niggle the, a yeah. little bit of detail that everybody seems to uh, do yeah, what bits, see, yeah. is when they lift the leg up they'll flick the knee yeah and you know why they do because they think it's a kick not a groin guard no because their trousers are too long <laughs> not that it couldn't be a preparation for a kick people i'm just saying but you know i had the same habit yeah. i had the same habit i had i had a pair of mastio's uh trousers mrs joe made mm. which were a, a beautiful um you know mandarin uniform uh trousers are fairly you know wide obviously they're built traditionally they got a gusset and everything yeah and you lift your leg and just as you lift your leg you feel the the, the bottom of this the um the leg is just touching underneath your heel yeah. so you give it a little kick to flick it away as you do it and i've seen them people do it so often and people go oh is that a kick and you go no <laughs> their trousers to trousers yeah. are too long yeah. that's the reason people do it so just and, and older people particularly yeah. where yeah. they've got the nice uniforms yeah. yeah yeah so you're just raising the knee the toe is actually pointing downwards yeah okay and and you're protecting yourself and then you're going to move in and as you move in of course you can put your foot consolidate your stance put it where you want inside outside depending on where their leg is yeah yeah and and so you can press against the knee or you can just ensure that they don't kick as you're uh, twisting their their face so that's the first move then obviously those blocks are double and then you're going to repeat the spear hand with the upper block mm -hmm. this time the upper block doesn't have to be blocking upwards it can be striking towards the chin striking towards the nose it can be covering their face without even striking you know the, just putting it over their eyes so think of it as a movement not yeah. as a use in that sense it's got to be used for lots of different things so yeah. don't think of it just as one use the um because these blocks and th those people following you who know the set will, will understand what we're talking about they're repeated quite a few times yeah. you are you're coiling up to release 
Um, yes, I'm b in both. Yes, yeah. with both of them. Yeah. So, so you're, you're yeah. really, really, really twisting, twisting those, those arms. Um, yeah, you're and really the, twisting. And there, when you twist and release, there's an example of sort of the ging, if you like it. Uh, you know, as it comes out, just so. To speak. Yeah, and also when you're changing, when you when you are doing them and you're moving backwards, if if the instructor was look from behind, shouldn't be able to see your elbows. Right. Right. Okay. So it's very it's forwards, and yeah. it's a, and you should not have the elbows to your side, because they're part of the the, the, the whole forward motion. Okay. Um. Right. So just moving on. Um. Obviously, it's it's we we're gonna have to generalize a lot about this set because it's very oh complicated yeah yeah. Thing, there are specifics that people yeah. do wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 that's why I want to generalize okay. on. So but there are lots of things. Yeah. So. Uh, another thing I see people do do wrong. I mean, the next you do what's called a threading block, all right, which is a yeah. very long. Um, yeah, threading, threading one leg forward, forward, one hand forward, yes, one hand back. Right, yeah. One hand back. And what I yeah. see a lot of people doing with with this threading block is they interpret it as a swing out to the side. And they really do swing out to the side. Yeah. Um, of course, right. If you were using it to, to throw someone to down, take them and push against their chest, yeah, it would mm. be a swing out to the side, but I'm talking mm. about really exaggerated movements here. Yeah. Threading block is going forward, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's going it's going forwards, but it's going, it's threading, it's literally threading, so mm. imagine you're just threading around and yeah. Yeah. and forwards, yes, but um, yeah, you're right, it can be used for lots and lots of different reasons, but mm. the reason I might talk about that is because when people do demonstrations, they make it far longer than it's necessary, yes. so if you imagine the beginning of that movement is very short, mm -hmm. and then it continues to the next bit, and the next yes. bit, and the next yes. bit, as, as your, your arm starts to elongate, mm -hmm. and your your stance starts to stretch and your arms start to stretch and of course any point in time from the very beginning of that movement to the massive outstretch has a use, has a use. Yeah. so it isn't just about oh I have to get to that point in order to make it complete yeah. but you know that at that point where it's that long yeah, yeah. that's where it can be a throw that's yes, where your one leg yes, is much further yes. forward behind their leg yeah. and but your left hand is pushing them over yeah. um you know not necessarily spear at them but again you could look at it as a spear yeah. you could look at it as a release mm. because it's come in one direction then to rotate in as it starts the other hand is going backwards so you can imagine it someone's kicking you and that the the rear hand is actually picking them up yeah. as it goes back and then you're throwing them so that they're, they're actually standing on one the, leg when you do it. Oh, there's yeah. bloody hundreds of they're, ways you yeah, can use absolutely. it. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, the point I think should resonate with people is what you just said then was about when you when you see it done in the set and it's elongated long, right? Mm -hmm. Most people think that, the, the, and this is what you've just said. So I'm just re I'm just going over yeah. it again. Most people think that at that point when you're long, you're if you like posing or whatever you want to call it that's yeah. where the use is it's not yeah. true it, the use no. of that technique is the very genesis of when you start creating it like i love the way techniques. you use all these big words james it's because i, I watch star them. trek i swear yeah to God. well jesus but, I, the only genesis but, i know is the the one i queued up for <laughs> dude i can't dance right and uh, but but it's true in all techniques like we always say you have a beginning of the journey the journey itself and the end of the journey Journey. most yeah, people absolutely. are going to just focus on the last part of that technique in yeah, this example yeah. pose sorry mm -hmm. to bore you mr newbie but let's no, move no, that on. is that is that is exactly what they're doing they yeah. are doing the movements in a much more elongated way mm -hmm. when they learn the set but they shouldn't be doing that by the time they've mastered that yeah, set yeah. or or close to i don't yeah. think anyone will master a yeah. set yeah. but i think it's just when they become much more proficient at that form, yeah. they have a lot more ideas of, of which, you know, yeah. what's useful and, uh, uh, and what's less useful to them, but more useful to someone else. But there's nothing in those sets that isn't useful. Yeah. You have to find its use. Yeah. Let's just um, very, very, very briefly. You, you, you're doing a kick and a high block, you know, on, on this yep. opening. Let's do them at the same time, shall we, people? You know what yep, I mean? Yeah, we do. We do um, them at the same time. Let's just, yeah, let's skip over that. Let's move to what's another good bit to sort of pick out on people, Steve? What, what do you reckon? Um, the, well, you know, when uh, we were talking about the second set the other day mm. about that bounce of the wrists. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, we're oh, not well, there we... yet. We're not there yet. We, oh, that's aren't too, we? That's too far in. Hang on. Mm, we've got. I was we've looking got, forward to that bit. Oh no! Hang on a second. We've got before then. We've got a jump. We've got. To, we've got jumping kick, haven't we? We've got a jumping. Uh, but that's only just before it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying. Flying front kick. Flying front uh, yeah, kick. okay. I can make a couple of points about yeah. a flying front kick Go because there's a lot of people often that learn this uh, in a later life. They start to do mm. these sets and they think, shit, I can't jump that high. Mm. You don't need to jump high. It's called a, flood, uh, a flying body kick for a reason. In other words, your foot only has to be about an inch off the floor and you can kick because all you're doing is throwing your body forward and kicking, mm. not kicking from standing position. Yeah. So as you step, you don't put the foot on the floor. You, you're merely almost shuffling along the floor to kick. Yeah. And I think a good example of that, actually, is that Jason Crabtree did a set that you liked mm. when he was doing a kick like that. And that's basically what he was doing. And he looked comical to people. I believe people would have looked at that and said, oh, that's a bit comical. He was merely trying to explain. And this I don't know this guy. I haven't spoke to him, but I'm going to interpret it. It's a flying body kick. He's he's, mo he's shuffling as he kicks. Yeah. He's, he's flying as he kicks, but not in a long, exaggerated way, yeah. which he probably would have done when he was a lot younger. Sure, sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So he was just his body was floating along. Yeah. Uh, the, the his foot was floating along the floor, and he's sticking his foot out. So absolutely, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, when, when we're doing the kick itself, with your right hand, you tend to brush your, your kicking leg, your kicking foot, don't you? Um, Am I yeah, right? when, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. What we're doing the jumping front yeah, kick. Yeah, you're doing the front jumping front kick. And yeah, you're, you're again, it's just covering the space, covering and the so, space, so covering it, space. Just so people, you know, can interpret that. You know, what's the use? Well, basically, you know, you're demonstrating that you're aware that that there's, you know, there's no space, no space between your foot and the target. If you yeah. like, if no, you not not foot and the target. So, the, the, the 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 your head and the foot. So, you know, the gap between yeah. your arm yeah. and your Sorry, leg that's what I has meant. to be covered. That's yep. what I meant. Okay. But also you can interpret that that hand being thrust out in front. You can yeah. interpret that as, you know, if you weren't doing a, a flying body kick, people, you could just be putting that hand in front of someone's face prior to yeah. the kick. So, you oh, know, yeah. but that but that would also be repeated in the previous set. In yeah. um, but anyway, yeah. now we're on to the bit that you... I would just want to make a point about the wrist on. So you've done yeah. the jump in front kick. Yeah, it's it's just a repeat of the second set. It's just it's that bounce. Mm. So we've done the front kick. We're covering our groin with the right hand. Immediately we're going to bring that right hand, and and from there we're bouncing. So we yeah. we cover the right hand straight away. We're going to bounce. And as we're bouncing, the arm is higher. So it's more of a upper block. And you know how we really pull the wrist back yeah. to strengthen the. Um, the forearm muscle. yeah the, yeah, yeah the, uh, the inside of the forearm well when we're doing it with a wrist all we're doing is merely strengthening the outside of the arm Are you but doing we it can now? all oh sorry yeah you're I rustling am. i know i'm sorry <laughs> okay, yeah i'll tell you what if you if you cut my arms off i'd be speechless <laughs> so basically yeah you're just going to bounce that wrist out and yeah. it is a block but it could be a strike with the wrist as well and then the next thing, of course, is your palm strike. You're going to bring that down, and you're going to do the same as in the first set, yeah. which is the uh, the harvest hand. Um, so just, they, there, there yeah. is a, a distinct difference between those yeah, two things. Yeah, but it's it's worth saying that a lot of people interpret that wrist bounce in back pigeon as a forward strike, as in they yeah. think in their head, oh. I'm hitting with my wrist to a target in front of me. Okay. I want to give them a reference then that yeah, might yeah, help yeah. them. Do they think the same in Fei Lung Chi? Mm, yeah. Because it's exactly the same, only it's called an elephant's trunk in Fei Lung Chi. Um, I've seen a lot of people do that wrist strike in Fei Lung Chi exaggerated upwards. But, you know. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's up, but yeah, it's sideways. But yeah, it's it's yeah, a basically sideways, a side block. That's yeah, the key, yeah. sideways. But this yeah, is what it's a thinking. strike to the side, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're striking to the side. You may well be opening a gap on the inside of that arm so that you can then, because your wrist is bent out, you are now doing palm strike. Mm. So, Or rotating it and doing the edge of the palm strike. There's a question, actually, with, um, I think someone mentioned in an email to me, one of the listeners one of our mm. fans listeners <laughs> <laughs> call them and uh, and they did say 
about doing press-ups on the wrists and so on, which is why they may have believed that they could strike upwards with that wrist. But I did explain that the fingers are then volatile, you know, and the, yeah. the, the hand is volatile. Sure. The wrist is meant to go outwards. You, you literally, we used to do this a lot, breaking wood, you know, those nine inch by nine inch planks of wood that you break in the grating, yeah, planks of yeah, grating. Yeah. Used, to, used to hold them and break them sideways with the wrist. Sure. You can just like strike the wrist. And but so that's what it is. It's a sideward wrist motion. Okay. Um, but she she mentioned that she was doing press ups, which made her believe that she could do the strike like that. Yeah. I, I think that's how I interpret the the message anyway. Right. And but but the reason we're doing wrist press ups is to overextend that wrist, mm -hmm. so we can stretch the wrist one way. Then we do palm press ups to stretch the wrist the other way. Yeah. And if we do both of those press ups or push ups you now have a very very flexible wrist from a very uh, stretched bounce of the wrist yeah. to a recovery or a, a countermeasure striking outwards with the palm so wrist palm wrist palm wrist mm. palm and that that's there's your two over extensions to, yeah. to stretch those wrists that's what you're doing the push-ups for i think to overextend. so you've got a b yeah. much more powerful palm strike yeah, I think it's worth just mentioning to people as well that the, you know, every time you bend your wrist back, every time you create, uh, that's creating energy. So, you know, yeah. you know, if you just yeah. bend your wrist, you've got now the ability to create power with that palm. Yes, exactly. That's what it's back. for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, that's why you do a strike with the wrist because yeah. it allows you remember when you're doing martial arts you're not thinking about the movement that you're doing at that time you're thinking about the following movement yes. just the same the reason you do steps is so that you know where you're going to be standing in the next moment yeah. i mean you don't just fight for the moment you must fight for the future yeah. because you need to end the fight as quick as possible so it's a wrist loaded wrist is a strike outwards mm -hmm. a palm strike from that loaded wrist is a strike inwards so you've done two strikes with just a bounce of a wrist yeah. and and that's what's making it work yeah. there are there, there are i mean we discussed the back of the hand with um yeah. fail and chi the other podcast yeah. and yeah. where people keep pulling it back no don't pull it back so and now of course you've done that you've done that your palm strike and now as your palms and you've done your harvest hand what's the harvest hand going to do the harvest hand is going to rotate round and become the edge of a palm and then you're going to cover it completely rotate that round do the same thing with the mm. left hand and then do it again so mm. you're literally doing sticky hands in effect yeah. it's a really good position and then oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great it's a great if, if you're following that it's um you know yeah absolutely we can no. demonstrate it yeah. on the video yeah. if yeah. anybody wants yeah. to write in i'll go in my garden i'll put get my phone out and i'll just video it and i'll send it you mm. yeah. it's, it's just um, a simple motion let's just skip those those bits um, and move on to the, uh, the, th the what people think of as a strike to the throat with the thumb but you can also oh yeah in that's a great so one. go on you, you you go ahead then yeah you so you're doing, then doing the back of the hand this is where when you're taking a black sesh grading you turn into <laughs> logo look up cune because you you end up doing a palm and then a you know the edge of the palm so well, the back of the hand and then the edge of the palm yeah. is in phalon chi and then suddenly you, you get confused because you're, you're worried or you're nervous and you go back of the hand and then thumb well that's bok pai jern but then suddenly instead of the thumb you then do the palm you know the, the side palm and they they cross over okay so the back of the hand and then the thumb and you ask people what's that for what's that for and they go well the thumb is to the throat the thumb is to the eyes the thumb yeah. is to that well how come it's so short then because it's literally in your fist it's like making a knuckle but with your thumb on the outside mm, yeah it's very isn't short. it yeah, yeah, um, yeah. sitting on top yeah. so it can't be a strike it's not a strike if you want to use it to strike why don't you just bloody use your fingers so it's not a strike and people misinterpret that so this is a, a wonderful thing because what's happening is as you do that palm and you may well have done that palm to the collarbone when you do the the you know the guys if you do it with your right hand you're hitting him on the uh, right uh what is it yeah right collarbone <laughs> you're doing I'm, it I'm hitting i'm hitting myself and all you're doing is rotating that that arm that hand grabbing his throat in the mouth of your your um your thumb and forefinger and then you're just squeezing tight that yeah. um windpipe 
Yeah. And if you squeeze the windpipe tight enough, your fist will look like that. Yeah. And his windpipe will look like a straw. Imagine so. you're trying to click your fingers, guys, but just using the index finger instead of the middle one. Your, yeah. your thumb and your, your fingers that's, is going together. And yeah, that, that's a good description. There you go. I like that. There you go. That's, that's, why, that's, why yeah. that's why I get the yeah. fan mail now, Mr. Newby. Basically, <laughs> collarbone, <laughs> collarbone, grab the throat, squeeze the throat. Squeeze it. Yeah. yeah. Or as they say, you know, write the theme tune, sing, <laughs> sing the theme, the theme tune. tune. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's move yeah. on to... Yeah. We're we're about to turn around. We've done all the rest of it. Blah, 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 blah. Turn around. I don't want yeah, to listen. Little that's, bit of claws. That's, yeah. Block strike. Block yeah, yeah, strike. Yeah. Let's talk Move into about. One, yeah. Let's talk about the um the the tiger claws in this or tiger presses the mountain. Yeah, tiger presses the mountain. So yeah, you need to be the one's almost as if it's gripping the leg if it's trying to kick you and you're just squeezing on the thigh, mm. and the other one is just grabbing at the throat. Yeah. Again, another throat thing. Um, and you're doing that slowly and impressively with a long stance mm. uh, from one side to the other. Yeah, it's it's just a very traditional technique. But um, it's it's more the, the the emphasis that I know you uh, would 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 have taught uh, and have taught me is that we want to make some sort of uh, connection with our thumb and our sort of middle finger to. to oh yeah, make sure the, the thumb always when you're doing a claw. Yeah. You can't grab anyone if you have your thumb facing across the way. It's got to be facing towards the yeah. any one of the two middle fingers. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's, it's always got to be towards yeah. the fingers. If if you try to grab your own wrist and you you know like you were feeling your pulse, pressing it down, it's not going to hurt you. What you got to do is you got to dig it in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and when I say feel your pulse, I say that carefully because you don't feel your pulse with the thumb because the thumb has its own heartbeat so in first aid of course you don't actually feel your your you know your pulse with your thumb because of that reason so but what i'm saying to you is press your thumb in to the center of your wrist and the fingers on the top of your hand mm. and you'll feel that your hand goes quite weak and um you know because you've literally got a claw digging in the way into it yeah. uh, but if you press it to the side and don't dig into it then that's a very poor claw and that's what a lot of people do when they're training they forget to actually use the technique yeah. and there's another example of how doing something in a set can't compute yeah. uh, to doing it for real or doing it yeah. you know for a purpose yeah so. um, we, we we'll we'll kind of skip on a bit um, I mean let's talk about the dynamic heart kick let's just go all the way forward to there um you know yeah that, those yeah crane's wings you yeah. know your your the crane's wings obviously a double block out and as they come in they can grip the hands that they've just blocked so it's a nice wipe trap and uh, and as you pull those hands and, and this is really important as well um many times it's like the done yeah dynamic heart kick if you want to call it that uh, you can call it just a bloody front kick if yeah, you want but, just but, do it as a yeah but isn't it called a dynamic heart kick because you're not so much kicking forward you're kicking, kicking yeah upwards so you imagine the solar plexus solar yeah plexus. you are kicking at the solar plexus if, but, you're but again i'm well i'm not going to tell anyone to kick no. anywhere because no, and the reason no, for that yeah, not not yeah. not because i'm not i'm yeah. not trying to argue the fact I, I think you're right but the reason i'm not saying kick there is because you don't know who you're kicking you don't know what they're doing at the time so if you just say kick to a specific target mm. um i mean okay most techniques have to have a specific type like the grab to the throat i just mentioned yeah. but a kick doesn't and a punch doesn't so you know say oh punch him in the face no i punch him in the in the, above the boob with a with a single knuckle <laughs> punch him in the collarbone yeah. it hurts a lot more punch him in the throat yeah. bloody stop him well, you know it's, plus it's you're not, not gonna hurt your fist when you do it exactly well. <laughs> exactly and it's closer target because it isn't so high yeah, if you're a shorter yeah, guy yeah. you know so so when i say kick you know dynamic heart kick yeah that's fine so the main thing I'm, I'm discussing here yeah. is the grip back as you pull yeah, back yeah. because I was at a course once in the Blackfish course and I was assisting. during the war during yeah. the war <laughs> I was assisting someone who had the, the, the ideology that oh don't pull the hands all the way back 
to the waist. Just to the waist, just hold him. Well, that means you're losing half your grip because if you do that, they become very weak. If you pull them back to the wrist and then twist, you've literally got a much more of dynamic grip and kick mm. at the same time, of course. Well, the, the, then he was doing that with a dynamic heart kick in actual yeah. fact. So it's the same kind of technique. It's the same technique. Mm. And, um, and I thought... No, because you may as well say to someone, oh, don't pull your punch all the way back. When they're learning it, they have to start from the beginning and punch all the way to the end and then yeah. pull it all the way to the back. So when you're learning this technique for the first time, you must pull those hands from the grab, crane's wings, then draw back all the way back to the waist mm -hmm. and then tilt them a little bit because you've actually consolidating your grip we're doing that and then of course you're kicking out and mm -hmm. the kick is obviously going to be more powerful because they're coming closer yeah okay to a degree so and that's why i says to you i don't want them to kick necessarily yeah. in any particular because if the guy's too close you're going to end up kicking the groin is far course. better of course. otherwise you're going to end up your knee in your face yeah. aren't you yeah of course so, but it is it is in in the syllabus if we're going to just go back to the, the if, if we do it as a set yeah we are yeah. We, it is called the dynamic heart kick because in theory what you're doing is you're kicking with your heel up to the heart at an angle underneath the, the sternum into yeah. the into where the heart is and i say that in inverted yeah. commas and allegedly what you know which stop, makes stop it a heart. dangerous <laughs> kick yeah yeah right yeah, which, which is makes why, it a dangerous technique yeah. in theory so yeah which is why but the thing is you know when people say oh you can uh, people, a lot of people teach like this don't they, they go oh you can kill someone with this technique mm. oh I, you know this technique <laughs> will kill this person that per, that you know and you go wait a minute wait a minute how many people have you killed yeah <laughs> And he goes, oh, uh, no, but I just know it will. Uh, oh, well, no, you don't know it will. You don't know unless yeah. you've done it, yeah. you know, or you've watched someone with that technique yeah. do it. Then you can understand. But uh, anyway, that's that's but, yeah, by yeah. the by. What we can say so, is it will uh, if you just get if you stand there <laughs> yeah, and kick. You know, if yeah. you're like a Dimac master, you'll just get someone to stand there while you bring you know, and prove it. Yeah. <laughs> But but there's one thing that I want to draw back to, which is slightly before that, and okay. that's these that I will refer to as yoke punches, and people will argue, right? Now you know the techniques that yes. the two fists Excuse that me, are yeah. done three yeah. times, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. they're done three times to the head, yeah. and and what we will say is always never do them at the same time. Always do one slightly before the other, very very slightly. And the reason for that, left hand invariably is weaker than the right, so you'll hit with the right first, send the face towards the left, and that will increase the power of the left. Yeah. Okay, but more importantly, you're using 100% energy of one, 100% energy of the other. If you do them together, it's fifty percent absolutely each yeah. Yeah. going both ways. Absolutely, I'm glad so, you mentioned that. That was a really yeah. good point. That. And the reason I call it yoke punch is because it has exactly the same mechanics as the yoke punch that's coming upwards in Laogar Lokapion. So it's right. exactly the same technique. It's just aiming yeah. at a different but target. But Mr. Newbie, one goes in and one goes up. Yeah, and. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, but that's what people say, isn't it? <laughs> well, and, one goes and when up. when it goes one, down, when you one see goes up, then, yeah. I was going to say, one goes up to the tri tricep, which yeah. is a great technique yeah. if you're swinging. Yeah. And the other one goes up, you know, uh, or it could go up to the face if you kicked him in the groin, yeah. because the back one will be going up to the face if, if the back kick, right. you know, when you're swinging that leg up to the groin yeah, and yeah, he ducks yeah. and he comes forward and you smack yeah. him in the mouth yeah. with, the, with the fist. But if you don't do it and it's the front one, and we're going back to look lookup cune here. Uh -huh. It's obviously going to the tricep yeah. because you're holding the arm with the one, swinging it up with the other. Hey, I've got to, I've got to play devil's advocate, Mister Newbie. You know, go for it. it. That's it. I d and I just did. That's why I said what I said. Oh, you oh, sometimes okay. I think that you think that I didn't know what I was talking about then. I hope you know what you're talking about. <laughs> you give me a slap, otherwise. Um, <laughs> um, right, let's let's move on because otherwise we'll end up talking about Lago. Look, if you don't know what you're talking about, it's going to be another few pieces of that A5 paper. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I thought my sword set was reasonable. I think it looked I all right. Oh, I loved geez, it. Sir. I think it was great. It's just grammar. Yes, grammar, 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 grammar. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, sorry. Moving on. Um, where is that axe punch oh, well we got we got axe pretty much punches. no no we're on axe punch i want to just talk about axe punches the like oh the, yeah right. after yeah. the kick okay. you know you got two axe punches yeah. what's that about what are they about 
Well, they're self-explanatory, really. Someone's going to kick you, you're going to block and hit them. Yeah. You know, block them with one, with a smacking fist, yeah. you know, against the leg. Are you eating, James, in class? <laughs> yeah. All right. I should mute. Use me mute. Sorry. Mm. Close that mouth when you're eating. I'm rebelling. Close it. I'm rebelling because you, you know, you. Yes, I'm, you I, I'm meant to have a good sword set, and you said it was rubbish. <laughs> I didn't say that. I never say that to anyone. I'm kidding you. I'm joking. I'm joking. Okay. Go so on. you're striking down with the one hammer fist to the leg as it is kicking, yeah. and then striking the thigh with the other. You could be striking anything. Again, I'm not going to give a specific target because mm. it totally depends on the makeup and the size of the person that's yeah. fighting and the speed. So it it is just too too similar two strikes yeah but but you know i i really think that people you know take an idea that rather than use two techniques at the same time you always try to slightly delay the second one yeah. it's like in the butterfly knives when people sort of go oh the, the two cut in yes they are cutting but if you change your wrists as i was saying to you the other yeah, day yeah. then suddenly one sword now is behind the other so now you've got a longer blade yeah. so it's 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 sort of that kind of detail oh, that yeah. you know unfortunately it's, people don't get and no, no, uh, i think i think a lot of people don't appreciate that detail with you mr newbie and i'll be honest with you and well uh, in the past and, and the i know there are a few that haven't <laughs> yeah, well, they, but but the problem is they never get to the point where because it's like they don't have they don't believe because any, I don't want to get into it, but they, they, no, just, they just no, it's because I'm not going, I'm master, I am your yeah. father. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that's I, why that's the attitude, you know, that's that's throughout martial arts. That is, if you want to hide behind a facade, I am your father. Mm -hmm. If you want to hide behind the bouquet, bouquet uh, where is it? Blockade? <laughs> facade? That, no. Facade? facade fac yeah, that's the one. There you go. If you want to hide behind one of those, <laughs> then, be then you know, and be like the, the master kind of thing, then fine. But that's never been my, my thing. And um, yeah. I just love the science but and I love the detail I and just, I love argument. Yeah, and, but, and but, but you know what? makes it good. In, in all the time that I've trained with you, I've never once called you mate because I never would disrespect you like that. Oh, that's, oh right. But okay. it's true. I don't call you mate. Yeah, that's, I call you that's Steve, true. I never really I thought you, of that before. But if I call you yeah. mate, that's too casual. I, you've got to show mm. respect where respect is due, people, yeah. you know? You gotta, you gotta know your place in the pecking order of things, and, uh, <laughs> you know. And I know my place, but just so do you never know that? You never know that. I don't. Well, I, I, you, mate, because I, that's I too would... friendly. Like I, yeah. you know, I love you like a dad, but you know, uh -huh. that's too friendly. Uh, <laughs> I, you, well, you piss me off. You like should love sometimes. As well. <laughs> you should love me like a boyfriend. That would be a bit too friendly. Mm. <laughs> hey, it is. It is twenty twenty. You know. <laughs> right hang on where are we now i always i always thought that was just about my vision <laughs> um, hang on we've okay. got to finish where are we finish we've done these axe punches we've talked about them and then we finish off with again yeah we're just we're just slicing down yeah. and then re rotating and changing that the yeah. other way uh, i i don't know you know why they were changed around but you can say one is male one is female yeah you know yeah. right hand changed around left yeah. I I, th I one, think with those two, two. The, the the on the first one the the right ha the right hand I interpret it I move the right right fist to the left fist and then I move the left fist to the right fist so I'm I'm interpreting different grabs and um you know Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, it, uh, I'd have to demonstrate that to you, but that's the way I yeah. do it. Um, and then we finish off with the, the, the single leg stance again. The uh... Yeah, just coming up again. That isn't, you know, I wouldn't suggest that that's anything to do with, you know, uh, Marshall. So again, what are you saying? That is, what are you it, saying? it is just, yeah, I know. What are you saying? I'm not, not saying exercise. I'm... You mentioned exercise. What's yeah, wrong but you asked me to say what it wasn't, you didn't have and to I say said, it. You didn't have to well, say it's it. not, yeah, okay. Well, it isn't that. I would say it's more to do with tradition and yeah. you know, up like that. Okay. Well, in that case, then, we will finish because we are probably on track for the longest podcast we've done.
Yeah. Um, you know, but you, I, you know, if, if you know, you know us by now, guys. You know, you either listen to it, or you don't. But uh, just you know, if you are, if you do like this, give us a like when we, you know, post it on Facebook or whatever. You know, because yeah. Wushu posts get more likes than our flipping podcasts. <laughs> but... That's terrible, isn't it? Oh, we we. Well, we're going to have our Patreon soon and um, hopefully some yeah. instructional videos from the off. Mm. So it'll be right from the beginning movements right the way through. Very, yeah. very intricate detail basics, right? So don't, if okay, if you're a black sash and you still don't know what the first movement is for, attention, drawing back the hands, it's your opportunity to find out. Mm. Because, you know, so many people don't know that. And, um, you know, what's a fighting stance for? please you know it's not as simple as you think no. um, but there there are so many things that people oh, don't that, understand they rush through the, yeah. the garden without smelling the roses do you know what that's another well, thing i was going to talk about fighting stances but we'll do that for the next one i want yeah, to just okay. click, do some things some things i noticed yeah. um guys listen thank you so much for listening to us uh, drone on and uh, you know have a bit of fun as always we don't take it too seriously but we do take pride in what we do if you enjoyed this podcast guys and um we'd we'd, we'd really really love you to go over to uh, our facebook pages give us a like and follow us on youtube and and follow us on podbean and whatnot and hey leave some reviews if you think it's worth it if you took anything from this please you know just return the favor and uh, you know just Can, do yeah, what's, that. what's that thing on youtube what do they do on youtube when they what do they do they don't just like it, do they? they oh, they, yeah. They? Oh, yeah. Like and subscribe. Uh, subscribe. That's it. Like we need subscribers, subscribe. don't we? Yeah, that's right. On YouTube. Okay, have you, you got anything written on there that we can sub that they can subscribe to when they watch on a video? Oh, I think I don't. Oh, yeah. There's every time you watch one of our YouTube videos, there's a little uh, button at the bottom right hand corner, and you just click on it, and you become a subscriber. But oh, right. Okay. I mean, the thing is with the YouTube at the moment and the video situation, because we're all in lockdown, it's hard to try and you know get stuff. Out other than in you know individual stuff and you know etc yeah. but we rest assured guys we will be adding to the uh, library of vids uh, in yeah. time to come we're actually working on that I, I went up a mountain today did you I went up yeah Knox Mountain um, today oh, right. um, yeah and uh, saw some gophers and stuff like that wow. but didn't see any snakes there were signs saying you know uh, snakes in this area yeah so I have to watch out for them in the right. summer but not right and then and yeah, but the boots out of them. Yeah, we got to the top. We found the car park. <laughs> <laughs> um, now we knew the road went up there, but it was blocked yeah. off at the bottom because it's winter yeah. still. Yeah. Um, we uh, there was a big bar across the road to stop cars going up. But in the summer, you can bloody drive up to the top. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> and we had to walk all the way up. Yeah. And but but the reason I mention it is because it's a beautiful area where I can do some vids. Yeah. Oh yeah. Demos. I'd much rather do them outside than inside. Well, you know. Uh, you know. Show off there's that. nowhere at the moment anyway. There's nowhere to do them. You well, can't have a hall. So. Yeah. We'll show off that beautiful North American scenery. You know? Yes. And, yes. Uh, it, it really is beautiful where you are. You know. Not at all. Yes. Yeah. Um, no. Of course. Right. We've got to go. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much for joining us uh, yeah. today. And. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, get in contact with either myself or Steve, and uh, mm -hmm. we will be more than happy to accommodate you and yeah. uh, and try to help you out. Guys, thanks again. Thanks for joining us. You take care of yeah, yourselves. Keep, yeah. Bye. Bye now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> so I kick your little Beijing ass right now, man. I ain't scared of you. I know you know that little tricky shit. Come on. Hi guys, thanks so much for joining us on the Kung Fu Podcast. If you like that and you want to find out more about us, you can head over to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or YouTube and find us under SJN Martial Arts. And also guys, this podcast is available on Podbean and iTunes. So until next time, take care of yourselves and we'll see you again on the Kung Fu Podcast. Why doesn't somebody pull off 45 and bang, settle it? No, no guns. But, 
so yeah you you kept me waiting for four and a half yeah. hours and do you know what i did in that four and a half hours what did you do i got oh, that i got that desperate i ended up watching david carradine Sh <laughs> shaolin workout holy shit i tell you i was it was like honestly it's like if you pop an lsd it must be like that because i was watching him and everything from the bloody clothes they were wearing to the to the shit they were pumping out was just shocking like take your mic down a little bit james it's uh sorry in the red. sorry is it going in the red yeah oh jesus christ yeah yeah <laughs> but it, like Car i love david carradine no 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 well, you would have loved him on this because imagine right this is the the sort of aesthetic right there it's 1987 when they did this thing and it was like imagine if like thunderbirds uh you know and uh, 2001 a space odyssey and 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 miami vice all had a love child together and that love child did kung fu that is watching that bloody david carradine thing it was mm. shocking <sighs> but i know watch still, that you, because you're still uh, going in the red you're still going in the red oh i am in the red i'm bloody pissed off i was watching carradine right hang on <laughs> yeah, let me let me probably just probably just your face i can see probably 